right. Appreciate, you know, being patient. Basketball season started tonight, so I was behind about 10 minutes. What's that? Was this a game? Oh, just practice, but games are coming soon enough. So, yeah. All right. So we'll call the meeting to order, 610. First on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Is there anything that we need to add, Therese? No. Okay. Just need a motion to approve. So moved. Okay, all in favor? Aye. So we have 605, we got the uh, Bethel Library Association. Yes, so we have Bennett Law, and of course, nobody knows this woman, Lisa Campbell. So, um, so these are your two of your library representatives, trustees, right? Is that the right? Yeah. Okay. I knew you had a title <laughs> how many trustees is, are there seven no. oh wow nice I, I think that's where we're at now. makes sense yeah. so all right floor is yours well um so i did i think send um teresa cover letter and sort of a summary of what we've been up to this year yeah, um it's what, in their packet yep what we're looking at for next year um, and one of the things I didn't include on the summary for those of you guys who were able to get to it is we're working on some accessibility issues at the library. So we're fixing the steps out front that's on the agenda um, and uh, looking at a ramp for the back um, entrance. And so we're looking at funding that as well. That so the yellow tape is because the step that goes down to the sidewalk is broken. Oh, okay. Um, it broke last winter, uh, and then um, and then it just it's continued to sort of deteriorate. Yeah, there's actually a number of steps where the concrete is broken, and uh, um, we had somebody fall, a trustee fall, oh. the other night after our mm -hmm. so oh, we the steps all together. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're super busy. We've um, we're getting uh, our audiobook and, and ebook system set up, which is really exciting. Um, we've just replaced our computers, they're all installed. Mm -hmm. um, the ARPA grant from last summer paid for a new printer. So it prints and copies and scans, which doesn't sound like much, but for us, it's a leap forward. <laughs> um, so, and after January, we're looking at reopening on Saturday mornings. So um, lots and lots to do. And next year is full of stuff like look updating bylaws and that sort of thing. And um, uh, we're gonna be a part of Bethel University and get a, um, a couple of classes in there. So really just trying to reach out to the community as much as we can. And our board is super excited about um, the changes that are coming up and super engaged. So I guess I'm wondering if you guys have any questions. Okay. Uh, are you any interactions with the school? Well, we just got a CLIP grant this year. What? So we got a rural libraries CLIP grant. So we were the recipient of that grant, but part of that is working with the school to do two storytelling events. There'll be one on December 8th, and another one in, it's not scheduled yet, but it'll probably be early May. Um, and so there'll be a storyteller coming from the Cliff Foundation in December. And then a young uh, now author will come and also do an event then. And in May, the kids will each get to choose two books to take home with them to keep. So that all pre-K through, um, pre through five is so we're very excited about that earlier this fall we had a reading discussion group that's right that involved yeah. the school as well as adults in the community they came together by the same book came into the library mm -hmm. and did a discussion there that one part we did as well. it was it was very exciting um so we're thrilled to be building that relationship as well so so a library actually has seems to me to be quite a small area like, what would you do if you had 50 people show up to want to be part of a group discussion there? 
Well, we haven't had 50 people be interested. I know. I hear what you're saying. I'm hope. We're hope. I'm hopeful. Well, we're hopeful, and um, one of the things we're we're taking on also is um, we're going to try to move the legislative breakfast down to the library. Oh, so we start next Monday, a week from today. Yeah, there you go. So um, yes. So if it gets super big, um, then we have some alternatives to move it to a larger space. But we've had um, groups with, you know, 15, 15 or 20 people and that, that after that, it gets kind of um, tight. So things like um, last summer, they had the teddy bear picnic and it was 97 degrees out or something. So they moved everybody inside to the air conditioning and there were over 30 people there. Some of them were little people, so it, it was a different kind of fit. But um, yeah, if we had 50 people interested in an event, we would uh, maybe have to um, borrow the town hall. Yeah, it would be exciting, actually. So I know this was probably two or three years ago, um, because every year we have an appropriation for the library, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just like some of the other maybe fees and appropriations that we've had. It, it's been the same dollar amount forever. Right. Um, so I think at that time it was like $2,500 yep. or something. And, mm -hmm. and I know we had a discussion at the board because we were talking about all kinds of different appropriations of, you know, is an appropriation for $2,500, is it, is it too small, too big? You know, what, what, what does it really need? to be mm -hmm. um so we started talking about that board and i think maybe we'd ask Therese maybe to reach out to the library to see yeah. you know you know what what is the long-term plan with the library mm -hmm. um and how how does the library see the town's part in the library so mm -hmm. and I, I know last year or maybe <laughs> two years ago you guys had asked for five thousand to mm -hmm. do the computers yep. And then in this current budget, we continued that $5,000, if I remember right. Uh, and now you guys are asking for $7,500 this year. So, you know, money aside is, I guess, is what is the long-term goal or focus for the library? And how how does the town fit into that? So that we can prepare can. for, yeah. you know, I mean, to me, it doesn't sound like $7,500 a year goes very far. Um, you know, so, so so what is the road, right appropriation? And, and the town's people may say no, but right. But what is the right appropriation so that you can have more people, uh, fix your steps, and, you know, that type of thing. And and for, for so long, it seemed like we didn't yeah. really get any information from the yeah. library, so we really right. didn't know right. what's the money going to, is it being helpful, Right. you know. Yeah, and you have an endowment, which is we don't know the ins and outs, like how that works. And right. so, so that was it, but that's where kind of Bennett. Yeah. So our annual budget for the next year is $50,000. Half of that goes directly to two paying staff. So we have a library and the rest of it goes to heating the building and getting the lawn mowed and having the stuff plowed and things that you need to do. The water bill. Um, yeah, <laughs> the town of Bethel's uh, water, and water sewer, sewer. Yeah. all that kind of stuff. And we have uh, budgets set aside to actually buy books, you know, which <laughs> sort of makes them sense. Yeah. We, to say they have an endowment isn't really accurate anymore. They have some investment money. At one point, they were trying to build an endowment, but they've been living. And so now the endowment so generates it, at most about $5,000 a year. Which is ten, which is ten percent of our budget. You guys provided ten percent of our budget last year. You know, I just it, it's a little bit apples to oranges, but you know, the town of Randolph provides eighty percent of the library's budget for the Kimball Library. So, in the, some in some sense, Bethel's getting a town library with very little scratch here. Um, it's been the library's budget has been paid for by drawing down that investment. Mm -hmm. which is down to about $200,000. That's not going to last much longer. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have to come up with 50 grand a year and they're pulling, they pulled 36,000 out of the investment account last year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, I set up all kinds of alarms when I joined. And he said, did. This is not working. <laughs> it's not a long-term solution. It's true. We need to sort of sober up here. Right. I think you all got our appeal letter that we sent out yeah, in the yeah. survey asking people what they wanted from the library. And we were really encouraged with that. We got fabulous feedback from folks. 
Um, it's changing what we're doing in some respects with mm -hmm. the library, but also validated a lot of what we were planning to do, which is good. So that helps. So membership fee. I'm sorry, I couldn't remember if you you know they did back in the day. Okay, when it first some libraries started, do. They did that, but they know. haven't done it for decades. Okay, yeah. I was just curious. Yeah. So, you know, another thing that we've been, you know, that, that appeal that went out is that I've lived in Bethel for 35 years. I never got an appeal from the library. That's correct. It's yeah. the first one anybody can, can remember, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it needs to become part of our culture, I think, yeah. because, you know, I've sort of asked the trustees to figure out where we're going to, if we're not going to draw down that money and actually try to build up an endowment. If we had a million dollar endowment, we wouldn't be worried. Mm -hmm. You know, it would be great to be yeah. there. Um, but they, they just, like I say, been living off pulling money out of the investment account, which was, I guess, easy. I, I guess in the past, people have left money to the library. <laughs> Nobody's been doing that significantly <laughs> lately. We've had a couple of nice requests lately to pay for uh, new lighting in the, in the nonfiction room and stuff like that, but not yeah. million dollar kinds of uh, right. requests. So... It's a fair question. We're planning in our budget this year to draw 30,000 more out of that investment account because I don't know where I'm gonna come up with $50,000. We do apply for grants, but if you, as you see, the grants come in at $1,500 and $2,000 and they contribute, but it doesn't pay the operating expenses of the library. Yes. I went to lunch with the with Christopher Kaufman Ilstrup who runs the Humanities Council in Vermont. And I said, what should the budget for the library be? And he said, $150,000. You're kidding yourself thinking you're going to run a library for $50,000 a year. Mm -hmm. But again, there's no money. So you do what you have to do. It's currently open 17 hours a week. We are going to open on Saturdays with volunteers. Mm -hmm. We not use paid staff to do that. Mm -hmm. And try to be selective about what role the paid staff use, you know, does, selecting books and that kind of stuff. We're trying, we know we're trying to meet the needs of the community. And, you know, I, I guess, I don't know if I'm on your wavelength, Chris, but $7,500 isn't going to do it. Right. But it's better than we had. <laughs> you know, I, I think, you know, I think this is just the board. We haven't really discussed much with the library, but just my thinking through it is, well, one, a $50,000 budget definitely is, <laughs> is, is short. Um, but, you know, the, the second thing is I just want to make sure, well, two things, one, whatever money that the town is giving the library is going to good use. And, and the second thing is, is that what the library really needs? You know, I mean, and it sounds like the library needs a lot more. Now, I don't know if, if we can provide more, but it's at least it's a discussion that we can have, right? And, you know, because continuing to borrow, you know, money out of the account, you know, just shrinks the interest that you get back in that account. And, mm -hmm. and you know, so, I mean, if we had to, you know, ring the bell tonight. I mean, what are we thinking that the library needs to do over the next year to get it in the right direction? Because it sounds like based on what you have there, if you borrow more money this year, I mean, you're only, you're only a couple of years away from what do you do? Like, That's right. Do you shut the doors completely? Yep. So, I mean, if you had to ring the bell tonight, I mean, what, what are we looking at Long term, or, or you know, or a, you know, three to five year plan to, to get things moving there that maybe we can discuss at town meeting um, with with our uh, taxpayers saying, you know, maybe we put something on the warning to say X amount of money to the Bethel Library, and then we can have a discussion of should we add that or should we not, and you know, rather than just the seventy five hundred dollars, you know, I'm just making stuff up like. Do you put an extra twenty five thousand dollars in there for the Bethel Library? Like I don't know, but like, to, and at least what it does, as we've all seen, this says we have wonderful discussions at town meeting, right? Hopefully that we have it in person. But um, it as far as that discussion, then yes, that question: the budget for this year is um, anticipating funds from the town or stripped out of the investment account, totaling thirty five thousand dollars. So, How did you make out on your, um, you know, the letters that you've sent? So far, pretty good. 82 people have responded, and we've gotten just over $7,000 from them. Yep. Now, like I said, was the first one we've done in as long as anyone can remember. Yeah. I don't know that it will always go that well, mm -hmm. but it was a nice, it's been very heartwarming that we've got such a good response. 82 is 
closing in on 10% of the of the population mm -hmm. of the town sent checks. Yeah. That's pretty great. That is great. Yeah. And for membership, if even if you charge twenty dollars a year, do you think that would be sometimes it's hard to institute those things because it may not be worth it by the time you create membership cards and you do all that sort of stuff. I, you know, it's like selling dog licenses, right? You know, it's kind of yeah. tricky. Yeah, I was just curious if that would bring you any sort of, you know, annual, regular annual income. Like, now that you're offering all these great things, right, like ebooks right. and, you know, all yeah. that stuff. And I understand that impulse. Um, my concern is that not everybody in town is going to have an extra 20 bucks. Sure. Is that going to say, well, we can't go in there because we don't, right. we can't pay the membership fee. Yeah, that's a good point. So, but that's something we can talk to our board about and try yeah. to figure out, you know, is there some way we want to do that? Well, I'm um, sure you leave a donation jar on the counter anyway. We do. So, yeah. so I'm sure that people yeah. um, ask, but, but yeah. It, but not it as sounds often like... as you might think, but yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, it's, it's, but it's, we do. It sounds like your need is much bigger. It can vary. I mean, I've been in there when Kathy. Yes, say by the week. By the week? 100 people, 30 people. No, it's only open three days a week. And I'm not in there all the time it's open, but I would venture. Uh, well, it's interesting because a number of clubs meet there. There's like a quilting club and there's a knitting club. And those there's a book club down there tonight. Clubs. Yeah. And that's going to make a difference. There's always somebody there whenever I'm there. <laughs> you know, it's not like Kathy's sitting there and no one's there. Right. Um, I would say, gee, think about these clubs. Probably 50 people are in there a week. Is that that's sense? fair. I'm thinking... Uh, just thinking here, uh, if you could increase traffic so that you would increase uh, notoriety or whatever, of the, I mean, there are probably people that have moved here that have no idea we had a library. Mm -hmm. It's so small. Right. Well, everybody just got a letter. Everybody wants <laughs> <laughs> a house. Just got a letter. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. You might want to write another letter because I tell you, people are buying a house. I got a thing in my computer that recently sold homes. Every week, there's six to eight more homes sold in this town in this town wow in this town okay so <laughs> there's a there's a rollover of folks right. Right. and uh we had a young couple in here a couple meetings awesome. ago they wanted to get yeah. involved and, and they didn't know much about anything in that right. there's manual which i'm sure you guys are part of yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. so um and the point is if, if there's something that you could Increased traffic yes, will, will yeah, do good things. This did was took a business membership in Front Porch Forum, which allows Kathy to post regularly for every event happening. The Quilters Group is in on Tuesday. The Reading Club is tonight, whatever it is. And at, with a, what they call business license, you can post as much as you want, as opposed to an individual who's restricted to like four times a month. Yeah. So that costs us $120. But I think that gets to your point of how we're going to get more people aware of the library, what's going on at the library, mm -hmm. you know, what's happening there this week kind of thing. And well, I think the changes we've got in the last few years. Right. I think that's the time to get on the horse and, and go with it. We also just instituted having uh, regularly, I believe once a month, there's an article in the Herald about what's happening at the library now. Nice. We've got a volunteer to come in and do that, you know, interview Kathy, find out what's happening. So that's another way we're looking at promoting what's going on. Yeah. Did you put something in the town report? I'm sorry, I just don't remember. I think there has been something in the town report. Yeah. Okay. Um, the and we have a pretty active Facebook page. Good. So I know not everybody does Facebook. Um, so hence front support forum because front um and so and we get in some cases we you know I put on like the covers of new books here are new arrivals this week. Here's the here are the books that came from the ARPA. We added the you know to our uh, collection with a, a focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion because that's what the grant asked us to do. And we got some great titles in, and we got some great response to that. So that we got a great response to the teddy bear sleepover too. <laughs> so if you um, well, you could look at last year's town reports online and make sure you update because Kelly's looking for that sort of stuff now to update when your. Did she need that? 
Oh, uh, she's probably, she, I would say by the end of December. Okay. You know, or, or sooner, whenever you get it done. The other thing is too, at the last select board meeting, the equity and inclusion committee applied for a $10,000 grant. And part of that is going to be about, um, oh, well, Christy's online. Christy, was that a book? Were you guys going to do a, a community read or a read with a group? I'm sorry. I'm not. Yeah, no, it's, it's a variety of things. So how dare you remember everything we put yeah. in. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, no, it was a series of events. And one of them does include um, like a, like a, a book club and choosing a book and then providing the book for folks who want to participate. And that might be a nice thing for the library and the equity and inclusion committee to partner on because they got the money. Yeah. And you've got the space and the yeah. library. So yeah. they have the money to provide the book and do all that sort of mm -hmm. thing. So certainly um, through Christy or Owen, or um, if you don't have any of those email addresses, you could just email me, Lisa, and I could give you their email addresses. That way you could reach out to them. They haven't got approved for the grant yet, but um, they do. That would be another opportunity for you guys to, to raise your profile. Yeah. yeah, to work with community groups like this with the school and um and yeah, and the any committees, that would be great. Yeah. But it, it sounds like right now, I mean, even the number that you had just thrown out there was um thirty-five of the fifty thousand would come from either the town or borrowing, you know. So it sounds like it's about seventy percent or so. Of the budget which kind of lines up with the randolph number you had was a randolph date thrown out there like 80 percent or something but, randolph today. Yeah. No. I say this is their appeal <laughs> <laughs> while the taxpayers offset 80 percent of Kimball library's operating budget i was like Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, fortuitous timing so i mean i guess the way i perceive it would be i think a majority of the people in the community don't know the dire straits that the library is in right now Mm -hmm. um, and I think the, at least my opinion, the only way to get that out there is kind of the shock and awe value. Like, mm -hmm. like, you know, do we want to see a library in our community? If so, this is what it's going to take to fund it. Um, and, and, and put it out there, right? And we'll at least have a conversation and it may go, you know, you'd put it as one way or another, but, but, you know, right now, I mean, 50, you're saying, I mean, 50,000 is a bare minimum budget, right? Oh, yeah. And you're asking for really 35 of the 50 to be funded by somebody other than than, than the grants that you collect. Yeah. Yeah. And, and probably the right budget's really 100,000, let's say, right? Yeah. Yeah. At least to start. So, I mean, we're really looking at the town. If, they, if the town really wants a functioning library mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for the long term, that yeah. we need to start investing or somebody needs to start investing, you know, $70,000 a year towards that yeah. identity. Yeah. And, you know, I, I mean, I. So if you did it as a separate item on the warning, mm -hmm. then it becomes its own discussion item. So then basically it's not, we don't budget for it in the, um, in the general fund, but you kind of add it, you know, or we do, but we add it out there and then people can vote on it separately, which means it's own article. So that when it comes up for discussion, you and Bennett and Kathy and all the libraries are there to field your questions, make your case, and maybe somebody makes a motion to give you less than what you're asking for, more than, or, you know, or just what you're asking for. But Chris is right. That certainly brings your, your issue front and center, and you can have a, a good discussion about it with the, you know, a couple hundred people. I mean, I, I remember many, you know, town meeting days. I remember one of the only ones we had here was a big one where uh, it was something with the fire department needed more funding, right? Yeah. And, you know, the, the town didn't want to bring it forward in, in the budget, but there was a warning for it and we gave them like another $30,000, right? It was towards, I don't know, what it was for it that year. But, but we did it. But the biggest thing that I took out of that at that point is sitting in the audience was I didn't know that the fire department was in that, you know, issue of not having the proper equipment to go fight a fire. You know, I mean, it was, and I'm sure there's a lot of people that are thinking the same, you know, with the library. Like we just assume that the library is there and somebody's funding it, right? But you know, everything's good to go. So, have you thought of any any ideas that raise funds by people using library? i.e. 
if you were talking about membership fees, people have had to pay them, probably would go use the library. What if every taxpayer was a member? If someone from out of town came to me to use something, a small fee. I mean, that's, that's what the town office, office does. Yeah. You know, if they want, if uh, someone wants to come in and read records, they have to pay a fee. They want to, mm -hmm. whatever. But to get people in there, it, uh, that's not the right words. Um, but if everybody was a member and knew that they could go use the library, mm -hmm. and I think people's mind, if they knew that that was their library, mm -hmm. and Joe from South Wales wants to use it, he's got to pay a fee. Right. Yes. But I don't think you're ever going to find the fees yes. to get to fifty thousand dollars. Gene had something. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, don't. A couple things. One. Um, I did not know that the library was separate from the town. <laughs> now, my, so, so not knowing that simple thing really opens a whole, whole arena of conversation that needs to be had. Should it be part of the town? Uh, in some, even if a, a, some sort of a quasi relationship, but how do we, that fact, I think, is something that needs to be uh, fully known and understood. The second thing is that uh, I understand, now I may be wrong, but I'm very appreciative of the interlibrary loan, ebooks, audiobooks. But it's my understanding that those cost money, that there is a, a fee for if I buy, if I get an interlibrary loan, somebody has to pay the cost of transporting that volume from wherever it is to here and back. And so, but, so that's an improvement, but it's also an addition to the budget. It's also my understanding, and I don't know this for a fact, but it is far more expensive for a library to buy an ebook than it is to buy a hardcover. So I, Be I because it has multiple yeah. owners. <laughs> yeah. So the way we're getting the way we're getting our feet wet in that is an app called the Palace Project. And we're hoping to go public with that by January 1st. But we at the moment are not, the collections belong to the Vermont Department of Libraries and Baker and Taylor. So that's what, those are the collections that people will see to begin with. Um, so that is not costing us anything at the moment. So, but it's basic. I mean, people aren't going to go in and see the kinds of choices that they'd see in Overdrive, which is something separate through the Green Mountain Library Consortium. So that's an option, but it costs money and it costs per person who's using it to the library, which is why we didn't sort of leap in with that. But this is a little different. It's not going to cost us something until we decide hey, we have lots of folks who like the mysteries and we'd like them to have more access. That's when we need to start buying eBooks in our own titles. With our, in, you know, people, libraries like, um, so uh, Barry, Montpelier, they all have their own eBook collections, which makes a lot of sense, but you're right, it's expensive. Can you charge a fee some of the access? Or is that too complicated a bookkeeping? I haven't been charged a fee for that kind of stuff. No. Mm -hmm. no it's a service that the library provides. Yeah, right. fees and this money. Yep. Yeah. And yep. So and they have stuff. But um again, I think their library, I think, I think I'd have to re reread their town report, but it's owned maybe by the town. So but it is interesting. I, you know, I've been in towns where the library was not owned by the town. However, they had an agreement where the town actually took care of their building maintenance uh, to some extent. So, you know, there are these kind of quasi, you know, things that you can enter. And I think that was to help them because they had an endowment. And once upon a time, they owned a big chunk of town and they slowly sold it off. And of course, years later, they're like, dang, we should not have done that. But yeah. they did it 
you know, for need at the time. But so I guess we need to have a discussion about what. Well, I mean, I think get closer and relate and related to the fiscal physical plant. Uh, where are you in terms of weatherization? Where are you in terms of energy efficiency with heating, lighting? What, if any, attention is being paid to those fundamental issues mm -hmm. in terms of potential savings well, and lighting, all the rest? For example, that's just gone in is all LED. I think they're all, all the new bulbs and everything um, that went in there. Um, and that came from a small memorial fund that was, you know, given to us, bequested yeah, us. Hmm? Have you had an efficiency Vermont of men and do uh we haven't? I don't not to my knowledge. And... It's free. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And they you know yeah. they'll check your heating system, your lighting, um your draft, mm -hmm. your windows, draft windows, windows so, doors, yeah. and then come up with a plan and possibly some grants. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. We can look into that. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I know we'll be talking more about budget tonight and I mean, on a, a higher, we're going to get more into micro level of budget starting tonight a little bit, but okay. on a macro level, the challenges that we have at the town this year mm -hmm. is right now is just to perform the same services next year as we currently are performing. Mm -hmm. We have a couple of things. We have rising, drastic rising increases of insurances and retirement plans again. So that's costing us quite a bit of money that we have to make up as well as just the natural inflation of products. So um, like salt has gone from $77 a ton to $105 a ton. Mm -hmm. We use eight, 800 tons of that a year. So like our salt budget is going up. Our, you know, our, our diesel. diesel fuel <laughs> that was 35,000 is now 50, you know, so we have a lot of these in our budget that we're trying. We don't want to lose any services. Okay. We're, you know, I think the goal is to re retain the same amount of services and try to, to make it as reasonable as possible. But I think what I mean, what I would propose is when we start putting the draft warning together is, again, just to get that conversation started, because mm -hmm. is I think you should ask for, you know, I think that we should keep the appropriation that we normally the 7500 they asked for. Is in but then budget. put another thing in the saying, you know, shoot for the moon and say, you know, we need the difference of 35, whatever that is, and have somebody get up and, you know, we usually have 200 people there. We have 200 people there. So, you know, get up in front of people and say, you know, this is the challenges that we have, yeah. um, you know, and if we really want to continue to have a library, not just a library, but a good library, then we need to start appropriating this kind of money. At least we'll get some feedback. They might all tell, throw tomatoes at us and kick us out, <laughs> but at least we have a starting point. We know what we can do. Where right now it just, I would, I mean, I personally would hate to see you borrow more money because it's every time you borrow more money against you, you're collecting less interest. So eventually you're just down to zero, right? Yeah. So, and then it's a real kick you to come to the town and say, we have nothing. So now right. all of a sudden we're looking for 80 or 90,000. The other thing too, is once we do that, um, certainly, you know, it, you know, you're going to, we know you will know we're going to do that. So that would change what you put in the town report that report you know what i mean when you do that some definitely something to look at when i i'll do the budget summary and i'll put a line in there and say you know what and the first thing i apparently i'm going to say is the town does not own the bethel library and let them know and then chris always you know lisa speaks before the budget and kind of lets everybody know and that budget summary is right in the town report so mm -hmm. they everybody knows exactly so right. we'll make sure that obviously that we explain that and you'll be prepared to answer questions. Right. And I would definitely start looking at what you put in the town report last year and focus that more on the fact that if, if the select board adds you a special item in the warning, then it's going to give you a chance to explain a little bit about that. And mm -hmm. if you need a little more space than you've had in the past, if you did fine. Similarly. Rec, the rec committee did when they were looking at the skateboard park. Mm -hmm. um, um, okay. Stern, <clears throat> excuse me, they came in and did a presentation with pictures and charts and diagrams with red arrows and everything. Right. So if you had a, a handout similar to this that yeah. explained what's going on that you can hand out to the folks at town meeting. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, this, this could go many different you know, ways, but one, you know, the townspeople could say, we really want a library and we're going to have to fund it. 
or or you could it could inspire private donations it could inspire a whole bunch of different things mm -hmm. um from that discussion um yeah yeah i and, appreciate right. that very much and you could put you know we did before we did the letter we did it one year us us or somebody so it's on every chair you make copies and so when people yeah. come in it's already on the seat don't use the word endowment you have an investment fund you don't have an endowment that has a technical meaning that when i heard you were running your endowment that I, my thought was how in the world can you be doing that if it's an endowment you can't spend the principal so don't use that word because you that's not what you had so i mean i i would say at this point we you know we move forward, we'll discuss the budget tonight, but if we, you know, approve the 7,500, which is an increase anyways, and then set a separate warning item for the other um, 27.5 or whatever that we need, or that you would need so you didn't have to borrow money. Um, I mean, that could go many different ways. People yeah. may just say, well, I'll approve 10,000, yeah. whatever from the floor. That's a nice, that's the one, one thing I like about in-person is budgets can be adjusted in person. Mm -hmm. When you go Australian ballot, it's yes, no. There, mm -hmm. there is no, uh, can we do 10? Mm -hmm. You know, and we've, and you've seen it over the years, how many times there's been something. I remember one year, somebody only asked for like 5,000 for something and they ended up getting like 15. You know I mean? It was like, I've seen that <laughs> all of a sudden people, too. someone made a motion, someone second that, and then yeah. everybody voted on it. And, you could walk you know. away with a hundred grand, you know, you just yeah. don't know. <laughs> but, but I think at least it gets the conversation. People understand that the library needs help if we do want to have a library one way or the other. And this is what it's going to cost us. And feel free in between now and then get any information you have on, you know, like if Randolph funds a certain percentage of their library or, or any of the other communities, you know, what is that amount that? I'm a member of the South Royalton Library. I have a little uh, slip to check out my books from the South Royalton. Yeah, because yeah, like, maybe the surrounding towns, Rochester, Stockford. So, right. I kind of go down similar size, a little bigger, but when you start mm -hmm. talking Montpelier, Barry, people are going to say, if, well, I don't want to hear about it. But yeah, we could hear about the same. Tunbridge. Yes, oh, yeah, and Royal World Chelsea, World Chelsea World. has a pretty Rochester. impressive library actually for the side they of town they are. Yeah, yeah, that would be so. Yeah, and certainly, um, like I said, just look at your cover. If you need a little extra space, you add that. So. Yep, if I did, just tell you need an extra space. Tell Kelly, you know, if you look at last year's town report and say you had a quarter page, would you need a half or a full page? Just tell Kelly that I said you could have a full page. Um, so if we're going to do that, what do, what kind of information do we have to have to you? Is that also due by December 1st? If we're going to add that thing to the town meeting? No, we'll do it. We'll put the on the warning. has the right to put on the warning. You we'll okay. have to petition for it. But if you want more than the 27.5 in addition to the 75, I'll email you both. I have both your emails okay. to let you know. If your 7,500 is going to stay in the budget, then and you want 27.5 to go if you want that number to be a little higher just let me know and because we i haven't drafted the warning yet and um then you know you'll have the opportunity to to defend that mm -hmm. and um mm -hmm. certainly and, and i would say any you know any uh, take advantage of the write-up that would be in the in the town meeting day um records so and yeah. that is due by any of those by Kelly, January soon. Yeah, you can email Kelly. She'll tell you. She separate. already put something out, and I can't remember. She gave me a deadline too, and I can't remember what it is. But if you just write email, that's her. important because usually a lot of people will look inside the book to see, you know, mm -hmm. okay, and it'll have a little history of what the library is looking for, or yeah. mm -hmm. or you could put any data on there that you might have, yeah, or, or examples of what other towns are doing, or you know, whatever. Like yep. it helps helps that, and then yeah. And, and once it, I see that, it'll help me craft when I do the budget status so that it talks, tells everybody, like, here's our budget. Here's the things that have changed. Mm -hmm. When I get to yours, I'll be able to say, I'll, you know, get some data from your write up and say, this is why. And, and, you know, people, the library trustees will be there to discuss. And, and so it gives people a heads up. And then Chris will talk about it before. And then it'll, you'll have your own separate article. And, and, um, and, uh, all right, so I'll email Kelly in the face. Yeah, please. I'm sorry. I just can't remember off the top of my no, head. No, that's um, okay. 
I know she usually like the end of December. Yeah, I know she told me. Yeah. Yeah. This has been really helpful. We have about a month. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. For mm -hmm. information is a really good summary okay. of where we are and where we're going. Right. So right. I, I think that's helpful. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you guys very much. Yeah, thank you for coming. Thank you. We ran out of time for Ellie. No. no. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Thanks for being patient. Sorry about yeah. that. No, that's all right. So last time, uh, last time, two meetings yeah. ago, we talked about. Um, yeah. So you had um, yeah. a request to move some money that is in the recreational fund towards the skate park that would be identified to do the site work. And you are going to talk to Mr. Parker to get the drawings, square footage drawings, so that then we could get some sort of pricing or estimate for the earthworks. Yeah. Because originally, you, I think you would ask for 30,000. 30. 30. Uh, what we thought the site work would be. Right. And to talk to Michael Parker and see um, if he was um, on the same wavelength that we were. Yeah. And then Ellie sent so, me an email asking me to get the site work estimates, which I said is no problem. I have a working relationship yeah. with, with a couple of guys and not uh, happy to do that. But I emailed her back and said, I need I need yeah. a site plan. I, I need to get, right. if I'm going to get an estimate, I need to know how many square feet I'm having them dig. And then, right. um, so I was just waiting here back. Right. Yeah. So the people that we asked to raise for yeah. um, were different than the people that we were working as a committee okay. for. Yeah. And so um, we were asking other people. And, and so Kyle has been working on estimates um, for you. And and he's talked to Mr. Parker, so I'll oh, get him. Stay. Yeah, because we didn't know, yeah. Kyle, what the, I had no idea what the square footage, what you're building. Like, I know from the land water conservation grant that you had to do a, a rain, um, like an accessibility, I want to say walkway, but that would also be skatable. Right. So I knew you had to do that in order to get the 50,000, but I wasn't sure. I'm like, I'm happy to get estimates. I just don't know what I'm getting an estimate on. Yeah, um, I included that in the footprint for phase two, yeah. which is essentially a doubling of what's already there, which is about 20 by 70. I oh, think what's, 20 by 70 is what's there. Is what's there. I think it's a, a little over 70, um, but yeah. for intensive purposes. And then you have to add what, five foot by something strip. It's going to have to be five foot wide for the grant. Yeah, I'm not sure the exact width it needs to be, um, but somewhere in that, in that ball, but that would be included in that. 20 by 70. 70. Okay. Um, so. Because it'll be the same material yeah. as sense. the rest of the park and it's flat and skatable. So I don't yeah. see any reason not to oh, okay, cool. just attach it there. All right. And that's why I wasn't sure. Area here and all that stuff. Well, I would, uh, Dylan I think there dug was a it. big conversation about that last time. Well, there was. Dylan dug it last time. So I figured I would get an estimate from him because. He dug it last time. And yeah, we had to do under drain because there's so much water that comes off the hill. We had to, so I figured I'd just get, it. he did the work last time. He knew what he was dealing with for soil. So I figured, um, but it sounds like maybe you don't need me to get an estimate for you. <laughs> well, I think it's always good to have a few Okay. Compare and contrast. All Especially right. if Dylan was there. He'd yeah, and you could build on the side so. closer to the pool, right? Correct. Okay, yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. I can totally get that. the same no, yeah, no, but at least down. I know what we're. Yeah, but I did hear that diesel's going down. Yeah, I know. How much? But at least now I know what. I could only go. Okay, down. okay cool. <laughs> so I didn't say. Yeah. So, anyways. Well, yeah, and you know that can shift a little one way or the other, but I think. Um, All right. As it for estimating purposes, that sure. Good, All right, perfect. Good nice. Yeah, I'll give them a buzz tomorrow. So the the se the section two that you're looking to do right now is twenty by seventy, or is that okay? And and then the accessibility piece of it how, was how big I was just writing. It's included. That's included in the twenty by seven. Yeah. All right. Well, that's super. As far as I understand, it's basically digging down for frost protection. Yeah. Underneath all that nice concrete that gets poured on top, so it's basically a you know a four foot deep. Yeah. Um, removal of material and then filling in with sand and crushed stone. Also, have to find the. Um, I sent. 
How big? How big was the area of phase one? Same. It was same, same exact size. Yeah. yeah. And that one was what about eleven thousand? No, 12, it was more than that. It yeah. was um six, six. I think it was sixteen to twenty. Sixteen. Um, for the site work. Mm -hmm. Just for because what? Because it came in two phases. I yeah. can look it up, yeah. but yeah. Um, oh, okay. I gotta find the power line. Yeah, because well, you have a map. You sent I, me a map. I sent you the map. Um, but so I sent you the map, and then I asked the um course with Tim passing away um that that hurt so then I asked the engineer I got the plan from our as built and then um they weren't going to swear to me that's where it is so I'm going to call yeah or Caleb Holly or um no I can't remember Caleb's side yeah. who works at GMP and ask him to flag it Justin. is it Justin yeah. and um ask him they can tell me oh, where it is. <laughs> so this map is a little off. It, it may be. The oh, engineer no one. told me, well, because we put in a line to go up to the reservoir yeah. um, right through for the as part floor. of the water project. And so Tim yeah. knew exactly where it was. And I'm not sure he had, I, I don't know about, Honestly, when they finished the as built, I think I got them maybe right right after, maybe before after Tim passed away. So anyway, so I need to find the power line, Kyle, before we, <laughs> before we dig anything. But you can get dig safe for somebody out there. Yeah. Locate. Yeah. Supposed to be way wide. I know. And then I just and then when they told me that the so I'm like thinking my as built are good, but he said, Oh, it might be I'm like, so I've got to find it. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. Um, uh, so that's that's a primary. So I will do that. And uh, but I had I wasn't sure because I figured I'd kill two birds one stone. But so what's tell me his name again because I always some lives. Okay. Thank you. And um, if he can't help me, I'll I can obviously call Dig Safe and ask them. And um, so locate. Yeah, they're, they're very good because they've done it before for us. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, we did it because before when Tim and I, I requested uh, exactly. it years ago, they were right on it. Yep, and yeah. I need to, and, um, which is fine for me because I need to update my ad. He was um, making pictures and doing a map of where it was. Um, I know, and, and Richard hasn't found it on Tim's computer yet. I know. I know. So far, Richard just hasn't located it. And obviously, Richard hasn't been through all of Tim's files, but I had looked in the water book because he'd done a bunch of pictures and mapping during the project. But I think some of it, he just had pictures and things and maybe just hadn't got to finishing. Obviously, he thought he had a lot of time. So um, anyway, so I'll find power and get an estimate from Dylan and um, for you. So what did Michael say? If you don't mind me asking, what's his twenty by seventy price tag? Um, he well, his is you know obviously doesn't include all the site work. Yeah. But he didn't have anything set in stone. Um, he sort of estimated between sixty and seventy dollars a square foot. Okay. For his cost. So which would be how much for his twenty by seventy? For the twenty by seventy, that um, I have to get my calculator. So we'll pay for to 1400 square feet. It's, yeah. Um, times 65. Times $65. Yeah. yeah. 91 grand. Which is 91, which reads a little high because he's sort of including features in that square footage price. So a section of that's going to be the accessible portion, which is a flat floor and, and have, stuff like that kind of affects. We got the check from I. I'm gonna say, is it IOB? Yeah. Go on. Yeah. I saw. I'm like, oh, there's Lindsay's money. <laughs> and we got 500 for bottles lately. We did five. Yeah. So you got 50,000 there, 10,000. There's your 60,000. You got, yeah, you know, whatever so. you had fundraised. I can't. Mm -hmm. remember. So what are you looking at? 65,000. Fundraising. But so you're about 65,000. You think? I can't remember your exact. Um, it's gotta be more than that. It's got to be more than that. It's got to be Yeah. So anyways, but you're, uh, but at least now you have a number and then we can see what that, and I can tell you exactly what it is. I just don't have the yeah. spreadsheet in front of me. So, um, Because yeah, you had the 50 plus the 10 plus you were fundraising like crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. 
So, so basically, we're just, and we figured we could work with Michael Parker, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, and and we're just concerned about the site work. Right. Well, figure two, if you obviously you're, uh, and I can, I'll go through your numbers for you I'm again. Sure I, I didn't ready. think about that today, but I'll do um do that, and then you'll know you. Worst case scenario, you you have to scale that, you know, a little bit to cover your whatever if you got or not. But hope who knows, maybe prices will drop. So, you know, it'll just be cheaper, you know, to build. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm trying to be hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like them. Yeah. 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 Things are so high, but. Right. I mean, we saw how fast everything declined. So it's yeah. It never goes the other way as fast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey. All right. Well, I'll get you a price from Dylan, and I will. Um, so so I'll get, get a price, price from Dylan. Night work. And, I, yes, I also have. Right. He has a price, and I'll me. email you all. So and then we also have another um, person that's given us um, uh, an estimate of eight thousand for materials. Okay. Right. And then he's which is eight thousand uh, for materials, not including digging. Just right. Okay. And that Lindsay got, um, which is pretty much spot on with what um, the excavator I spoke with gave me. So a little over eight thousand for material, and then um, just under thirteen thousand for equipment and labor. So thirteen thousand for equipment and eight for material. Exactly. All right. Yeah, I'll just get another price for you and I'll email you and then and also go through your spreadsheet and figure out what's your your fundraising. So you, you do have a, a material specification sheet. What it is, what is that material? Um, I can, he said anyway, last time Mike it's, a, it's a mix of sand and crushed stone. stone yeah. Yeah. Okay, but you have something that you give to somebody new that bidding. Well, you would when you go to bid it out. I'm just going to get an estimate. So, uh, Dylan, I can look back and see what we paid Dylan for before. So I'll know, tell him to quote the same materials um, because he dug it last. I'm just going to get him one estimate. And um, so, because he specified last time Michael Parker. So that's what Dylan installed. Okay, well, I'm just mm -hmm. no, you're right. The materials can be $7 a, oh, sure. a yard and $75 a yard, depending on yeah. what you want. Exactly. So I'll just and I'll just get him an estimate on what, you know, I'll, I can find Michael's instructions on how do, he did it. We're going to have to do more drainage work there too. What? Maybe. More I mean, I don't know what work they there too, like you had to. Linda. Yes. Was it diverted kind of towards the town well, garden or? We went up. The town went up and dug out that trench more. Right. And so that we could deal with some of the runoff ourselves, and then, um, when. We, I'm trying to remember now, a couple years ago now, when Dylan dug, I think that we ended up having to put more stone in. And I think he had to do some with the grading and some sloping of the of the area. But we, the town, went up and dug out mm -hmm. to to try to alleviate yeah. some of the problems. Yeah, yeah. Drain it towards like the school side of the facility or into the parking lot side or do well, you guys know I think that we were yeah we were trying to drain it off onto Carol Ketchum's property, which Carol yeah when Carol was fine about it, we'd asked him because obviously if we're gonna push more water on his property, but he was good about it. And then too, there's a pipe up there and we put a hose on it. But I guess the point is it's probably less if the water was diverted yeah, that way, which it like, probably yeah. was. It would be a little bit right. less, yeah. It's just that whole mountain right there is just yeah. so I get it. I get it. Wet. But yeah, so we'll, and we also had moved some equipment and did some other stuff. So hopefully, right, it'll be less. Yeah, and, you know, we'll see. Was there a perimeter drain installed, like a daylight to anything? Or, or was it all uh, surface drainage? That was Surface there. drainage. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, um, that good. Yeah, yeah, right. That's, right, that's good. good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was also good. So, we'll um, yeah. give the power. But I do know that Tim knew that you wanted to build an addition of the same size. Yeah. Tim Tim knew that. We did talk about it yeah. before, mm -hmm. before this thing was going in. Yeah, so, yep. And I remember going down be there because we had you know, to have some work done and and it wasn't you know at the end when um gw tato did they came back and fixed some stuff and i remember seeing the flags but 
but I know for sure he knew you wanted to double the size. So, um, but you know, passed away unexpectedly. So I'm not really sure, but I'll find it and um, I'll get it laid out and then let you guys know when it's there so you can see the flags and um, take some measures. Sure that we have funding for this site work. We still need to wait to see how much the site work okay. estimate is going to be, I guess. So, I thought so, we were going to have a further discussion on how much we've fundraised. You don't have those numbers in front of you? I them? didn't know. That wasn't a question that someone had asked me. So I didn't. We I, were discussing costs. So she, yeah, all know. we knew was that Ellie was coming tonight with an estimate on the site, the site work. work whether or not they wanted if they wanted 30,000 out of the out of the um the actually the improvement fund or was the select board going to say we're going to put on the warning and so that you're going to have to go to the voters because we do fund a portion of that every year um you know we've done 10,000 20,000 whatever that goes into that capital fund so um right. yeah but not knowing how much we fundraise you guys should know that i sent that spreadsheet to Ellie. Yeah. well yeah, we, like, we have a number but i think it's different than the number that they have no i don't think so no, no, no. No. well no. i went okay. and confirmed with her that we yeah. raised the twenty five thousand. okay yeah, yeah she has her yeah no no yeah. I guess I think one of the things that we were, I guess, led to believe there's an urgency of getting this addressed in today's meeting in order to hit town meeting time to yeah. ask the voters. No. No. Okay. okay. No. Nope. That was what we really took oh, away from no, our no. last no, committee. No, we're just still yeah. doing the budget and then yeah. we have, we haven't done the warning or anything yeah. like yeah. that. So, so no. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. You were made there was a very urgency. It was, oh, yeah. Like, if like, you don't have it by tonight. Oh, no. No, no, no. I'm sorry for that. No, no. We, okay. we won't do it. No, I think the only the only discussion to be had will be at that point is yeah, is you know right now in the recreational improvement fund there's like I don't know sixty or seventy thousand or something like that that's in there um, that's not uh, identified yeah. for well really anything mm -hmm. but to back up there you know there was an understanding when we did phase one of the skate park there was a lot of uh, discussions about how much and how many square feet that we could go up like remember we talked about even if tony hawk himself showed up with a million dollars like we we're only doing a certain square footage out there um just because there's other plans for the green space um so there's been those discussions but in this case what we're what mainly talking about is roughly twenty thousand dollars of site work that needs to get done um and does and will well the board controls that money right but we've also made a promise to the citizens of other things coming in in this. So, um, you know, do we take the twenty thousand to go do site work with it, or do we leave it in there towards the master plan, which the next piece is to come? The other thing that we have that we have to address that Ellie's really aware of is our pool is in dire shape of some work which is gonna be a big ticket item here in the next two or three years. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, we're talking, you know, we have 60 or 70 in there now, we're probably talking a quarter quarter million dollars of the work that needs to be done sure. over there, so. And I hear what you're saying, but I just feel that we have done so much uh, of fundraising and, and, and really working hard for this project. Mm -hmm. And there's so much, gun ho uh, approval from the voters and for the um, whatever for this project to get done that you know I, I understand that there are other things too but it does say in this town report uh, uh, article 19 that the town voted to approve the creation of a fund um, and administered by the select board I get that for the purpose of constructing and maintaining improvements, and and for for us, uh, you know, the construction and improvement of this one project project to get it done, so that we can um, set our sights on helping and working on the other stuff too. Sure. And you got all your money. I mean, too, you guys pretty, made a you made a plea directly to the voters. I understand right. before I came for the skate park, and you got all that money plus the select board gave you additional money plus you 
that yeah, people plus are the wanting to money yeah. and right. so every right. bit of money that was ever right. earmarked for you, you you have been given. Right. right. But you're right, there's still money there. So it went out that eight thousand that spring. Yeah. People donated eight thousand dollars. Yeah. You know, so so it's there. We've been working hard. Absolutely. They 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 like this project, they use this project. And 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 so if we're really working hard to get this done in 2023, then we can work as hard on the other projects. Isn't the worst case scenario either you guys are gonna you will either allocate money from the existing rec fund or you're gonna do for them what you're gonna do for the library, which is put them on the warning and let them talk to voters directly. Yeah, I mean, I think in this case probably the logical way to do it is just to say to the voters that the current well they know because we put it in the book every year that this is the current value of the fund right. and that and that the recreational committee is asking to use whatever if it's twenty thousand dollars or twenty three thousand right. of that would like to go towards right. part two of the excavation right. you know not the from the existing part. fund it's not for the voters to decide on the existing fund. That's yeah. your responsibility. Well, as it board. is and it's not. But if because... you want additional money, then they could make their case directly to the voters. I know, but it, the only reason why I say, specific. well, the only reason why I say that is, I'll go back and I don't want to open the whole no, can of worms with Ellie, but there was a master plan that was yep. put out there for all the voters to look at. Oh, and I have a copy. There, actually, there was three master plans. Yeah. And everybody was able to look at the plans during town meeting day yeah. and voice their opinion on, I don't know if it was A, B, or C, but there was, or one, two, three, or whatever. And then there was variations. Some of them were, two of them were kind of similar. One was kind of way different. And everybody voted on that one um, master plan. And then, of course, you know, there's been <laughs> lots of things since then that, you know, have come fast or not come so fast. And mm -hmm. So we're just trying to make sure that we're inside the realm of what right. the voters of whatever eight years ago had asked yeah, asked for. Twenty thirteen. Uh, because trust me, we get the questions. If we, huh? you know, if all of a sudden we move money from that fund, and then people will ask us, well, what about the basketball courts, or what about the tennis court, or right. what about the pool? Never. You know, so we'll we have to be able to, you know, have that discussion with them. So. Sorry. Well, I was just going to say, based on that, you know, we have two young girls and they were with us at that town meeting when that was approved back in 2013, and they're still waiting for the skate park to be finished. So just think about their I, I had my <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> Yeah, so it's. So, so sorry, go ahead. Time. Oh, I was just going to also say that the, everybody here is here for the skate park. You know, we're not here for the basketball court. We're not here for the other thing. And that's what we're pushing to try to get done. And, and that's where all the support is right now. And that's what's generated all the money we've raised. Mm -hmm. And um, why we all think, and a lot of other people think that it's a worthwhile investment in our town. Yeah. And I don't know if any of you were able to see what the amazing work Kyle did over the summer with Camp Kick Flip, but it's incredible the range of kids the age groups that they come um and there's kids there that have never skateboarded before in their life and they're mm -hmm. just so excited to learn from him yeah i was over at the pool several times and there was always somebody on the skateboard yeah. we did budget in the recreation budget um the draft that's it's out to have it sealed every obviously we have to have it sealed every year so we paid for that so we did budget and i increased that in case the size increased so we did, you know, we are maintaining to have it sealed every year. So, um, but yeah, there was always kids over there. So what you can do is just make this another, it'll just be part of the ongoing discussion and I will do all the math and send it out to you again, although Ellie has it as well. And uh, tell you exactly what's, what you have in there, what's left, what's up for grabs, whatever. And then um, it seems like that's going to be the decision is either they're either going to appropriate it to you, but so you have one estimate and I'll get another estimate from Dylan and then just email it to you. We'll find the power. And um, then you'll have an idea of really, because at this point, what you're asking the select board for is originally you were just asking for site work, which was, you know, in this case would be 21,000, but in fact, you may need more than that because if you don't have the 91,000, between the 50 plus whatever else is in there, you may need more than just the site work. So I'll do the math and run it by all of you guys to see if you agree. And then um, they will just the select board can 
you know, we'll just continue it as far as a budget discussion. If you guys are all cool with that, but I'll do the math and email all of you. So you have it. You were the assumption too that maybe Michael Parker would be able to work with our budget too. So once we knew what, right. what we had for funded, we say, hey, right. this is what we want. We want it to be five by seven, 20 by 70. This is how much money right. we got. Exactly. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll change say. some things. And yeah. Again, because like you said, a lot of it's flat. So there really will be. Yeah. And he's, he's adjusted before for us. Yeah, he did. Yeah, right. he did. He was very nice. He threw something in extra. Yeah, and, the um, variability in the design. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That All right. To adjust. Yeah. So yeah because like, Ellie has an up to date spreadsheet that um, I yeah. think she shares with you guys at your rec meetings. Yeah. So, um, yeah. 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 We yeah. have. And we. See, we've had all these different. Cool. different. <laughs> all right, so I'll get. Um, it looks like Dean right. wants to say something. We, we, we I just want to say that I hear you that there are other ways than a vote at town meeting for the constituents to express their support. And one way, a significant way, is by participating in the in the event and in the, in the skateboard using it and another way is by funding it through donations and so on and so okay. forth and i think it's uh, those are powerful indications of public support uh for this whole thing and i want i just want that to go in the record that that uh there is support and there was support at that meeting when uh, the town said, no, we're going to go do this, even though there were some members who were really, really vocal in opposition. So uh, I want to give a, a tip of the hat to those of you who have worked so hard on this for not only doing the work, but for promoting it and getting the town to support it the way they have. Well, um, I, I must say, too, that when we did the survey in 2012, I went door to door in four neighborhoods and talked to people and got the surveys and had people fill out the surveys. And so many people told me they love the pool, their families use the pool, they love that their kids have swimming lessons. But once their kids get to be 10 or 12 years old, mm -hmm. they don't use the center. They don't have anything at the center to for their kids. They do the swimming lessons, but once their kids get 10 or 12, the family does other things. And so since that survey and since that committee, we have been working for activities and different things at the, at the center for a variety of people, for a variety of ages, for a variety of kids, and expanding not just families with little kids using that center. We put in um, picnic tables, grills, you know, Benches. we're doing trails. We 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 listened when when the top thing, the top top voter getter, when we did this sur survey, and I have the survey here. The top thing was not the pool. When they did the survey, the top thing was not their interest in the pool. It was in trails and biking and other things. Right, which and obviously so, we're focusing on. Right, and that's and, what we're focusing on. That's what we're doing. We're yeah. expanding the trails, the trail from the center to the school, right. the trails in the, in the, the marshmallows. You know, we're, we're, we're focusing mm -hmm. on activities for a variety of sure. people and kids and ages. And you've done family fun Fridays. Right. And, and Friday fun, whatever. Yeah. So so that's that's our focus. And um and 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 we're working hard at that. All right. So I will do the math, get you guys the math, get an estimate from Dylan to share, and um we'll like I said, locate the power and then, you know, the, then you'll be able to look at it. When's your next rec committee meeting? Um, Wednesday. Uh, not this Wednesday, like a week from this. The 7th, I think. Perfect. Then I will get you all the information so that then you guys can talk at the 7th. Our next meeting is the 12th. And 
So then you guys will have a better idea of exactly what your ask is. So December 7th. All right. I will get it done. And then um, you guys can talk about it and send me an email and say, this is what our ask is. And then that'll be perfect because we'll meet on the 12th and the 19th. So you're not too late. We just have to know exactly what the ask is and how much we have. So yeah. Sure. And, 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 and basically, because, uh, you know, when I came to you in October was because I know it seems like early, but but knowing that you're talking about the town budget and talking about, you know, town meeting already, I felt that that you know it's always good to be prepared. Yeah. It's the girl's down. <laughs> I feel like we're always talking about the budget. <laughs> so yeah. As a town committee, yeah. you know exactly what we want you to yeah. do. Yeah. So I will get make sure you all have I have all your emails so I will make sure everybody gets the numbers and get them kicked out to you so you have them before your meeting and then you guys can discuss it and we'll know what we're dealing with and I'll I'll call Dylan first thing tomorrow and drag them out there and get an estimate. Now when Chris said you're gonna talk about the budget um tonight later is that on recreation too? Not really. I mean, the section you've well, seen, all the, you've all seen the, the all department, you've seen that budget. That's but now that you said the pool doesn't matter, it's easy because now we can just take pool director right out. Yeah, <laughs> that's just saved the seventy thousand dollars. That's right. So yeah, no, the rest is just the rest is just. I, I believe she's on the record. Yeah, <laughs> does that sound right, Lindley? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's on the record. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not just for you. I put a placeholder. Yeah, because I know you've had informational nights sometimes before town meeting so will we have an opportunity to do that too well we yeah we legally have to have two we always do one 10 days yeah. before and then we do an additional one but you'll know we'll do we'll, we do a few of them we'll be sure i mean you're going to be now we'll make sure it's that it's part of their budget discussion on the 12th because then i will have given you everything i can give you and you will have told us what your ask is and then the select board can either they're either going to take it out of the capital fund existing or they're going to put you in front of the voters just like they did the library i have put a placeholder in the budget um just for ten thousand. you know how we usually ask you guys how much you want for the recreation master plan money i put a placeholder in a ten thousand just because i wasn't sure what to put in and that's what you've done last year so i didn't really know Thank you, thank you, and thank you for letting me be a Girl Scout and be for. <laughs> That's right. well, very happy. It's always nice to have somebody come and yeah. know in advance. So, all right. all right, and as soon as I get power, I'll let you know, Kyle. I'll send you guys an email, and then you can yeah, I see come over there and and see where the flags are. Yeah, I will. Yeah, ask him. Yeah, yeah. No, so we, I'm sure there's a map, and we will find it. Richard will find it eventually. But okay. I did ask, and it. I know because Tim promised me he'd take. Pictures. Oh, and I, you know what? I he, guarantee you. It's, and he had the nice white chalk, and I was over there. So it is there somewhere. He had the nice white chalk, and I was. Certainly, you'll find it. Yeah, I'll take pictures. And you know what? It, and. And the maps that he did do were very like, here's this landmark, how many, and Richard just hasn't found it yet. But I'm, I guarantee you, Ellie, it's, it's there. I just, Richard hasn't found it. Yeah. Cause I emailed him first. I'm like, did you check Tim's files? He must have one labeled the rec area. And he's like, I can't find it yet, but he will, you know, a couple months from now, we don't need it anymore. So, <laughs> but that's the way it goes. Well, thanks for coming. All right. Yeah, thanks, thanks for guys. Thanks. Congratulations, thanks. Lindsay, on the 10,000. For, for I hope because Pam came in and said, yeah. what is this? Yeah, and I said, you. remember your discussions yeah, with Lindsay about how we were supposed thank to get you. money? Yeah. And I'm like, it's that. So, yeah. So, we did get it. told me about that. Yeah. I O B. Yeah, so we just got it. I don't know, last week, week before anyway. So, it's nice. still so in there. So, that's great. Yeah. Now, will you do, will it? Continue to come, or is that a one shot yeah. deal? It's a one, yeah. That's it. Okay, all right. I, I, I could open up a new fundraiser. Yeah. Um, yeah. I really should have had it go for longer, but yeah. the IOB fundraising coaches said to not have it go too long. Yeah. Some people don't want to fundraise, which is reasonable. I mean, you did 10 grand and not, yeah. you know, so that's great. So, yeah. um, all right. No, I also was thinking down the road if we had to do the pool that I was like, oh, I'll ask yeah. them if she can do yeah. this again. Do the library. What yeah. Are, what other ones? Are it, was, it was really, it was nice because it just sent us a check, which made our lives yeah. much yeah. easier. So thank you for doing that. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah.
Michael Bennett. I can tell him about AOB and yeah, oh yeah, that would be great. I mean, yeah. he's definitely um, you know, and he might be surprised like you guys how much you got. I was surprised when I saw the check. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, so say even the middle schoolers. Mm -hmm. right. They want us. Don't go cashing that check there. Yeah. <laughs> no. She already did. She already tried. We already put it in the bank. It was made with the most legitimate sources. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. Lindley. It looks legit. Lindley raised that. Lindley and her <laughs> students raised that money. All right. We um I don't know. Some online donation platform. That's as much I know their name. That's it. <laughs> public comment. Uh, anybody that has anything that's not on the agenda? <laughs> Now's the time. Christy, maybe? Hey everybody. It's Christy. Mm -hmm. How you doing? Uh, uh, thanks for thanks for all of this. It's been a really interesting topic so far this evening. <laughs> You've been hopping there. Um, I did have a question, just a clarifying question. If how, can you explain um, for the rookie here? I feel like I'm always the rookie in the room. Um, mm -hmm. When you need to bring something to, like, if you'd like to bring something to a town meeting for vote. Um, is that considered a warning or uh, is, is that the terminology you use? Because I keep hearing vote and warning and I don't know if they're the same thing. And if so, what's the process? Can you like give me, is there something on our, our Bethel Town website that tells us how we can follow a process to present something to be considered for that? Uh, because I'm, I'm really unclear of the process. Sure, I can explain it to you. So it actually would be the Secretary of State's website, but say, for example, um, I don't know, let's say you wanted to put something, though. so the warning is what you actually vote on at town meeting. That's the document that tells everybody where um, the town meeting will be held, what time, uh, what are the articles that you're going to be voting on. So it shows first it lists if you look at a town report, you'll see it lists all of the voted um, officers, and then it says, you know, the budget or whatever. So it, so the that's the warning. That's what okay. you're voting on. So if somebody wanted to be sure that the town voted on something, like for example, we may be voting on this year on cannabis um, okay. because towns, you know, it's an opt-in vote. So for example say um, you wanted to vote on cannabis retailing, you would come to the select board and say, hey, I want to vote on cannabis retailing. And um, are you going to put that on the warning? And the select board could say, yes, they're going to put it on the warning. Or they could say no, in which case you would have to petition for it. That's where you have to go around and get X amount of signatures of registered voters in Bethel and have to turn that in through the process that's outlined in state statute and on the Secretary of State's website. Then that comes to the select board. And frankly, depending on what it is, the select board, even if you get enough signatures, the select board does not have to put that on the warning, depending what it is. Hmm. So I always tell people, if you have something that you want to vote on at town meeting, um, come to the select board, because it could be something that residents actually can't vote on so or do a binding vote so would be a non-binding referendum say you wanted us to address climate change right so that would be a non-binding referendum so if you have something that you think that you would like to vote on a town meeting just mm -hmm. email me email me and i'll tell you okay what the more and, detail on the process right and i'm so glad i heard ellie and her girl scout i was a granger i wasn't a girl scout <laughs> just gonna be full transparency here um but we were still maybe not as um prepared maybe i don't know but what's kind of timeline are we talking about as you're preparing for things like i just you know just to make sure i completely understand this um if you want to get something on you know, like the process, like understanding it, this is super helpful to understand how that works and understanding that you don't have to take everything to a vote. 
right? Even if it's been petitioned in, right? I get, that's really good to know. But I also don't understand, like, what's the timeline of things? Because you, like the last folks were talking about, the rec community were talking about, oh, we thought we had to have this locked in tonight. So what is it? Is it, does it depend on the thing? Or is there a time frame? There's actually a time frame set out by state statute. So I have this big calendar on the wall of my office and we just went through the other day to highlight certain things. So I'm going to shoot from the hip here a little bit. I think that we normally sign the warning, I think in December, the end of December, beginning first, end of first December to January. middle of January, yeah. first January, January, that January. We, that we sign the warning. Um, because we have to have the, the warning has to be published X amount of days before town meeting and it has to go in the, into the town report. So it goes out to print. So there's a whole schedule, which I'm sure is on the Secretary of State's website. But if you okay. email me, I could I'm happy to look at my calendar and send you some the information. Okay. But again, if you have something specific that you want to that you want to vote on or talk about, then you should, it should come to the select board like soon, the 12th or the 19th of December, because I will be drafting the warning soon. Um, so like, for example, I know we're going to talk about whether or not we're going to do the opt-in for cannabis. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be on there this year. Um, I feel like there was one other thing that I totally forgetting right now. Yeah, Australian ballot. Australian. Australian ballot was the other thing that we were talking about possibly putting on the warning. Um, what, and so, okay. but so this yeah, is super helpful. I appreciate you giving, I know it's such valuable time, but this really helped me because I'm hearing everyone coming and asking questions and not understanding timelines and the resources makes yeah. it hard for me to, to understand everything that's going on and all the context, you know? So I really appreciate the extra time you took. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Sure. No, send me an email too, Christy. If you have more follow-up questions, I actually could give you specific dates and, and things. So send me an email. I, you know, I could give you more information than you probably ever wanted. So <laughs> I guess I should be careful what I ask for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if you have a question, email me. I'm, I'm happy to send you the dates. I just don't awesome. know them off the top of my head. Thank you so much. You're and welcome. Even, and even if you do come directly to the select board, it's probably not a bad idea to have some conversations with neighbors, even if it's something like a petition, uh, just to bring awareness to the wider community. All right, that's good to know. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, Ellie, I think her example, I mean, she was full of valuable information, how she was going door to door, even in 2012. I don't know how that would land now, but, you know, the fact that, you know, she had, it sounds like such a valuable, valuable feedback and data, um, it's about conversations, right, and relationships, so that, that, re right. that resonates for me. Thank you. Yeah, one of the things that we, you know, we'll be encouraging because it's the first town meeting we've had in a while is that all committees have a presence at the school on town meeting day. And most committees have always done that in the past, besides have pie. Uh, if we're going to do that again, people had um, booths there. So the recreation committee, equity inclusion could have one. And then each committee was trying to look for, you know, maybe they had volunteers or could let people know that we're voting what they were up to. So <clears throat> that's something to think put on your radar too. Okay. Thank you. I did not know that. I knew about pie, but I didn't know about the booze. Thank you. <laughs> you knew about the good part. All right. So we next have uh, better connections steering committee. Yep. So we would just like permission. We're going to, we are going to make hats and mugs um, using a online something rabbit. I can't remember the name of it. Maybe Lindley can, but anyways, um, from South Royalton and we're using the Bethel for all logo because we did the parks challenge and we're doing some prizes. So which would be mugs and hats. And so for no hassle to us, we can advertise that. So people could buy them directly from this vendor and they would be, you know, sent someplace and they'd have to pick them up, but we could earn a little money off that. We, and it wouldn't really be a big effort to us. And um, so anyways, I let the steering committee know that they had to have permission from select board before they did a fundraiser. So, um, and then obviously the money would be earmarked or 
towards the implementation of future better connection projects. I did tell them I didn't really want to open a whole new fund for, you know, 10 bucks. If it was that, it would go into the general fund and be used. But um, if it was, you know, but they were all open to that, some using it for implementation of future projects. So. Good move. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 And then we had some uh, amend some material rules and regulations to include Christmas wreaths. Yes, that came up. Um, I hadn't thought about that before. So I put in the highlighted language that just, and I did run it by Cecil. Wreaths may also be placed from a shepherd's hook from November to April. Christmas trees are not allowed. I took the wording. I honestly read the Veterans Cemetery. <clears throat> they use natural wreaths, but Cecil said no. You can't say natural wreaths trees because some people already have decorations up that are not natural wreaths. So I don't want to make that, you know, cause that hassle. I'm like, okay. So this is the wording um, that I'd like to add if, and if you guys are good with it. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, I had a, it all stemmed from a, yeah. an individual that had reached out to me a week or so ago wanting to know if they could put up Christmas wreaths on a shepherd hook that they had. And I said, please, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've, been, I've been doing it every year in my so, mother's grave. Yeah. So I don't have a shepherd's hook. I have a, actually it's my trail pan yeah. stand, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm not going to do it this year, Joe, so I don't piss somebody off. Yeah. Well, and we did, um, we, you know, we just didn't, it didn't come up when we were mending this before. I never thought about it. And I should have, because my mother-in-law puts a wreath on my father-in-law's grave at the veteran's cemetery. should have this didn't cross my mind. So um, I just wanted to make sure that nobody was in violation of the policy. And so yeah, Cecil's good with it. I'm good with it. Yeah. <clears throat> I'd make a motion to amend the cemetery rules to include the Christmas wreaths. What's securely installed tight to the monument? That's the same wording we did before, which means you want it to be something that's don't go Substantial. stick a piece of birch stick in there. You know, like yeah, it has to yeah. be near the monument yeah, so we can weed yeah, whack yeah. around it and hope there's this level with the round, so there's nothing to hook to. Yeah. Yep. So just a shepherd's hook. So you just put it, you know, and you yeah. can get shorter versions yeah. of them. And that way it's tight to the stone and then you can weed whack and it's not a big deal and yeah. stuff. Right. So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And continuing on budget discussions. All right. So I went back through, updated some stuff for you, and I did go through and make the changes that we talked about before, adjusted some salaries. Um, also, um, I did just get the audit tonight, and um, one of their comments was for us to stop budgeting delinquent taxes prior, which was kind of We're funny. Trying. Then I told him, I've told him before, we're going down five a year. So, um, but what I did put on here on the revenue on page two, you asked me what the delinquent tax list was. So I told you what it was in 2021 and what it is in 2022. So I do think that the 15,000 in penalty and the 59 in interest are still good numbers um, to use because that was one of the questions you'd asked. Um, so I do think that's good. I think that was the only, I think I made an adjustment on admin reimbursed from sewer water. Um, obviously that changed a little bit when salaries and things changed. But um, other than that, I didn't change anything on the revenue side. And then on public works uh, personnel, I went, I budgeted for three full-time and two seasonal. Um, there's not a big increase that I'm even, I don't even know about the retirement increase. I just budgeted from 19.5 to 20.08, just because I don't know. Um, I budgeted the increase in health insurance and then did just a 10% like we normally do for the other half of the year. Um, since we're 18 months out, I did compare, uh, what I I was have been working on Blue Cross Blue Shield versus MVP in one of the plans that I thought would be the most similar. I did email with Blue Cross Blue Shield, and it's not um, 
you know, the same coverage. So I try to look at another mm -hmm. plan to see. It doesn't look like you know, there'd be a big savings there, but I, I am. So I'm still working on that. The plan that it looked like at the quick at glance was going to be, you know, very similar mm -hmm. was not. So, um, you know, once you get another fine print, <laughs> so um, we'll see about that. I did put out an email today asking um, Vermont local roads, if there was a way that we could take advantage of the um, uh, state of Vermont has trainers for CDLs. And I, and before we could train a CDL driver ourselves, and now we can't, they have to go to school. I did find out that in order for due to the training, you also have to do the driving with the trainer. So you can't get your CDL permit and drive with one of our CDL licensed drivers. You, so I did email Todd Eaton today to see if he knew if we could get in with VTrans um, to see otherwise, you know, that's a, a cost to us, but I didn't budget for it um, completely, but I did increase the budget from a thousand to 2,500, just, <clears throat> just to see. Um, the next one is 20,000 for tires and change. Yep. I did did you guys had asked me to research that? So I did. I went back um, 20 to 21 and 21 to 22. And we had spent 22,000 um, both years. So but that was out of the existing it, repair and it, parts. It was. But then I spoke to I spoke to the someone on the equipment committee and I spoke to um, Morgan and AJ. And, you know, part of it is that things are we still have old equipment. The loader needs service. And while we have replaced a, you know, a couple of trucks, we still have a grader and a loader and those parts are expensive. And it's still, so what I had done was gone back and I just level funded the proposed budget from last year for that. They're saying that to, to cut 20,000 out of there is they're gonna overspend it. It's just, we still have aging equipment. Well, it's not trucks, it will be, you know, other, it will be, you know, the loader, the grader, et cetera. Um, so they are requesting that we leave that, you know, that we leave it in there. Well, it's just like the previous year mm -hmm. budget, they, it was 74,000 total. Yeah. And now they're looking at going from 74,000 to 90. Right. And I mean, it just seems but, like an awful jump. But don't forget that one of these years, maybe it was 2021, that they that Alan came to you and you guys paid for tires out of the capital fund, which was a sizable, you know, cost the, you know, um, a sizable, you know, cost at the time. And um, so I can just tell you what the we, we bought more tires that year than we mm -hmm. normally buy because we tore mm -hmm. something up with some the wrong chain, tire chains. Exactly. And the wrong perhaps different cycle of chains. So you put the chains on the older tires and the new tires in the spring. But um, so anyways, they are, you can cut the budget, but I mean, and that's fine, but just remember no. that they're telling you that parts are expensive and that you still, you know, you have a loader with 9,000 hours and, you know, and this is not just us. This is also part of the equipment committee saying, you know, but, you know, you can knock 10 grand off it and take your chances or that's fine. We have the option to take 20 out of the aqua money. We did put, we have, we did 20 for a new, toward the new truck. Truck, yep. Yeah, you could. Sure. You could, yeah, you could leave it in this budget. Sure. Yep, absolutely. I thought we weren't going to use that money for anything that's going to be in the budget again next year. Right. I, yeah, you'd I, have I to take, you'd, have, about to, that. you'd yeah. have to take it out yeah. of the capital fund i wouldn't you wouldn't well, put it back in this budget fund. you would take it out of the capital fund at the time if they had a big breakdown that you felt you had to fund well i think we did that at one point in time wasn't there a piece thirteen thousand dollars for that we had to, that we had to mm -hmm. uh, allocate money out of the fund for that yeah the transmission so you could do that so you could reduce this hoping that you won't have an issue and then if you do be prepared to say okay we know what maybe we'll take a little extra out of the the maintenance you cannot plan for them. You you, right. you, you, nice. you just don't know what you're going to need. So right. I, mean, I would you know I would need. argue for you keep it in there. And if you don't spend it, well, praise God. Yeah. But uh, I think that that's something that needs to be 
in the budget and a re it's a regular budget expense, even if we don't use it any every year. Because they did a couple years ago, the equipment committee had made a recommendation to the select board that you spend ten up to twelve thousand, maybe for for re repairs on the grader to keep it running. So you could certainly do that again and say, you know, regarding the loader, to, you know, or I obviously if you're going to do that, I'd kick it to the equipment committee and they could decide what to spend it on. But certainly, yes, you have the option of reducing that number and saying, okay, we're actually only going to give you X in the budget. And then, but if something comes up, you look at the capital fund. I think just looking at that, my only concern and is we put a equipment, you know, committee together to tackle. Yep. Not just purchasing, but maintaining our equipment. Yep. And, and I think that it's done well, but it's also supposed to be there to be more efficient for us and it seems like our budget has gone up and up and up and up every year so i guess the only oh. thing before i get shot here mm -hmm. is is this a needs versus a want thing so yeah you know like sure since we put the equipment i mean we were at and our bookkeeping is much better now but yeah. you know we were at fifty thousand dollars for everything mm -hmm. repairs to parts and tires and here we are four years later we're doubled that well, sure. You know, I think because so, you're doing a more accurate account on what, and also too, so I think that, and the equipment committee is really purchasing new equipment and working on that schedule. We haven't really tasked them with managing the existing. Yes, we kind of look at needs-based when we're doing the equipment plan on what we're going to replace next, and we know that can change, but they don't usually delve into that. I think that for Morgan and AJ, um, they're both, you know, new to these roles, and they, I'm sure they don't want to come out of the gate knowing that the status of a couple of pieces of equipment, but if we lower the budget and, and we say to them, look, we're going to cut the budget, but if you have a big issue, we'll go to the select board and look at the capital fund, then they're going to be fine with that. They just don't, they know that the expectation is this is your budget and you are, if you overspend okay. a line, you're underspending somewhere else. So I certainly think that if they know there's other options available to them, then they're going to be fine with reducing this number. So if you want to cut 20 out of this um, to offset their other one, then then I think that's reasonable, knowing that they have a... So if you want to go to 49.3 to drop the 20 to level fund that, I don't see that as a problem. 69. Dropping that to 49.3 and leaving the 20 in separately to leave you level funded to last year. Last year was oh, I'm sorry. You yeah, sorry. It, you already got it there. I'm right. just throwing it out there. No, for, I'm just saying, you know, we got off the 69 to go to through, 49, you know. three plus the 20 puts us back at the 69. So I, I think that's fine. Did, so, just something that to think think about. Did I, did I hear when, when we first started talking, about, did someone actually have numbers on, on tires and chains for last year? I did. It's right there in the in there, 22,000. 22, in 2021 and 21, 22, we spent 22,000 on tires, chains, and cutting edges. Also, too, I will say Morgan and AJ are looking and purchased a different cutting edge um, that they might be a little bit more for the setup in the beginning, but they think is going to last longer. So they think they're going to be able to manage their costs um, and won't need as many cutting blades that they think that will work out. So, um, you know, there's a little, there's some possible savings there, too. So. I think that if you want to put 49.3 in the repairs and parts and leave the 20, that leaves you at a level fund of last year and see where, is that what you want to do? I'm happy to do that. No, no, good to do that. What do you want? I, I would say, I, I will split the difference with someone if they want to, but I we all know everything is costing more and more and more. And you're, if you, you can't level fund that that piece. Okay. Well, Even no matter how you want to break it down, repairs and parts, tires, chains, cut and put it all in one sum. Sixty nine three. If it if it was barely enough a, a year ago, it's not going to be enough now. Yeah, and he was saying, you know, seventy four three is what we spent last year, and if you took twenty two thousand off that, then you spent you know fifty four thousand last year on anything that was not tires, chains, and cutting edges. Mm -hmm. So, so what you have right now would be 
you know, uh, so if you want to 15, five and 20. So you get like a 20% increase over last year. Right. Plus the new item, 20,000 is what is yeah, I don't think you can, I don't think you can level fund. I don't, I don't, I think that's unwise. So you think leaving repairs, parts and tires, putting it to 55,000 and adding the 20,000 just to really, they just want to separate it out so people can see because they said this repairs parts number gets so inflated. They want people to know what they're actually spending it on, um, which we always want more accountability. So we could put the 55,000 in repairs and parts, which is what Dave is suggesting, and leave the 20,000 for tires, chains, and cutting edges. It's probably not going to be enough, but it, it's, it, it gives them a different number to look at. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, hey, we gave you a little more money. To, uh, try to be good with it <laughs> if you can. Yeah. And obviously, there's things that happen that you. Right. And, we're, and these we're... guys are also going through and doing all the service. Since Morgan has taken over, he created folders for every single vehicle. So now all the vehicles have, you know, maintenance and service records that they didn't, you know, have before. So where are you getting the 55 from? Dave's recommendation. Oh, okay. It's not on the sheet. I can see it on the sheet. <laughs> it all came out of this thing up here. Oh boy. <laughs> it's dangerous square foot. So what do you think about that? 55 and then 20. I think that's what I was going to say. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure that I changed anything else under here. Well, the, it, the 55 and 20. Yeah. If you do 55 and 20, then you're level funding it in the previous year. Right. Which didn't Dave say that no. what he was against? He did 69. Well, she meant level level yeah. funding actual expenses. Actual, not yeah. budget. I'm I, I'm not going over the actual. I'm going. I'm using the hoping that the next actual will not be, would be that again. But we're not level funding. If you take the budget number, mm. we're going to add. Oh, I thought you number. were talking about based upon the cost. No, I'm basing it on the budget and hope that we can. Uh, yeah, I'm fine with 75. That, that these guys can can figure it out to, to save a little money to yeah. stay within that 75,000. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. So it seems like there's, are you good with a 75, Lindley? Thumbs up from Lindley. Paul? Yep. Okay. I don't think I made any other changes to the rest of the line item. I tried to put notes in here if I did. Um, oh, I did. That's not true. I did on roadside mowing. I just did an estimate and dropped that amount um, because we had talked about that. I also reduced the um, sweeping. So that we weren't, uh, so we weren't thinking about doing a two. Yeah, just do a one. one yeah, time. do one time. So I did reduce that as well. And I think your notes from last time. Then salt. I I was right. I did the math. I just made it look better this time, basically. So I did eight hundred ton at one fifteen fifty. But I emailed with Cargill the other day, and I have to. Once I have some more time, I need to email her back because we have a price. The state has a price. A different district has a price. And there's like 8 million prices did, out there. Did we actually use uh, all 800 ton last year or buy 800 we ton? We bought 800 ton. Yep. Okay. I did go through last year and double check. So do I think it's going to stay? I Do I think that number is a little high at 115.50 a ton? Yes, because I took, you know, I do. We're on, I'm. I'm hoping it is because we're paying 78 now, but then they were paying 105, but I know the state's paying less. Um, so I think my estimate of 115.50 is high. Uh -huh. why, why, do we, why do we as municipalities have the same price as the state? We do. There's on, no more transportation. I mean, there's places yeah. in the state that are way far out compared to us. Yeah, we do generally get state contract pricing and I, that was my email exchange with her and it basically I need to take time to call her and because there's several prices out there and I did look at the state contract and different districts have different pricing so I'm always confused by when you go on their website there's a million I'm not state confused contracts. I understand it completely there's a million state contracts yeah. out for different no. things but normally we do like for example all of our culvert pricing bethel mills matches the state contract pricing it's pretty easy in the state of vermont there's for the most part there's one distributor of salt there, okay. there are sometimes two but there's one distributor of salt and there is mostly one 
transporter of salt. Barrett's. And I understand so that. It is. That's why they did not 100 miles away. But the, the, the district down here and the district in Randolph get their salt for $80 a ton, and we're right in the middle and we pay $100 a ton. I don't understand that. We, no. should, we should get it for if those, whatever those two districts get their salt we should for, drop, we should get it for that. that. We, I mean, we should look into that, but I, I think, I think that's said, the way I, it, I you can piggyback off the state. I was going to say, can we, can I mean, we combine? Gets their salt for 80 bucks, we should be able to get it for 80 no. bucks. I, like I just that's said, I, I but had again, sent that's the woman this year. We have, to, we have to think that this budget yeah. doesn't start. I Under, understand, but <laughs> but we know that this year it's it's oh, messed up. It is yeah. messed up this year, which yeah. I agree. And and like I said, I emailed the lady and I just haven't had the time to call her. And we need to have a full on conversation because I emailed her and said, I looked at the state pricing. Why aren't we at this price? And she sent me back this email and I'm like, all right, I need to reread her email and call her to get a better take on it. But anyways, we're at a good price right now, but well, for was, this season for this season but not for next season right and i just don't know because <clears throat> what we saw this year for the increase in price and then we actually got a better price than they were advertising at the time um because they wanted to charge us 105 and we're like no way i mean we locked in earlier so i took 105 and multiplied it to get to 115 because i just don't i have no idea so, but I do, I think my number's a little high. Yeah. I mean, realistically, but, what probably happened is we probably should hedge our bets and make sure we're covered, but there could be some opportunity there if yeah. we don't use all our salt money mm -hmm. that we could turn that into gravel money and go do some more yeah. gravel. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. If, if we, if we, you know, if we sub $20,000 left over, we add gravel, mm -hmm. you know, we go get some gravel areas you know we also have I'd different strongly recommend that morgan will be the one spreading the majority of the salt this year and he feels that there's going to be savings this Good. year that maybe we were overspreading and we're getting last year. like and we yeah. did they calibrated and this time he said he said he will be the doing the majority of salt and he said i think that there's savings to be had and how much we salt and how often we salt so it's always going to depend last year we had a ton of ice storms, it all depends so on the storms you get does. a lot of ice and you have to do a lot of salting just to cut it and yeah. you know it's so yeah the other thing you'd ask me is about the best thing for you because we snow you stand yeah. or salt behind it you're done that's right the other thing you'd ask me about was the gravel and i talked to morgan about that and he did say that that also includes material for mud season so gravel is not just for um, you know, it also includes mud season. We did talk about sand as far as changing to a new um, material. The and, only thing I would just and guardrail, I did reduce. Teresa, if you recognition. could just, I would just strongly suggest that Morgan and or you just get some really good documents of of the sand blender that we're going to do this year and yep. how well that does work. Like, yeah, get out of the season. Mm -hmm. We say. We didn't really see any different than the previous season. We just mm -hmm. go back buying the other sand that was cheaper, right. you know. Yeah. But if we actually see a benefit of, oh, it's staying on the roads, it's building to the road base, yeah. things like that, I'm then sand twice a day, every day. Then I can right. see like spending the extra twenty thousand. Yeah. But if you say, oh, this stuff just washed away, like all yeah. the other stuff, then maybe we just go back to the old stuff. stuff. You know? Yeah, and we'll know too because they get some good notes on that. Have yeah, have him get some notes. Okay. Like I'll make sure you know that they if, do. If Morgan says, "Geez, I only had the sand," you know, no, you know half as often as I had to before it stayed out there you know oh, or whatever that, that, that's the big one this year is going to be diesel fuel well yeah the more time you got to go back and forth and mm -hmm. it's more trips yeah. it's more yeah so, so what I'll do is I'll minute, I'll minute. Minute. to have his guys know that on time yeah. cards or to know when they load or whatever so that we have better some of those data. guys AJ him um Hazen Hazen they know enough by now that if they're spreading more sand than last year or less or you know how that product's working exactly so i we'd obviously increased patching i reduced guardrail after our conversation chris um kind of focus on rust must repair only and i had talked to ryan about that statewide he said it's crazy the pricing of um guardrail so we did i did reduce that one a little bit so the bit. eraf can you just take me through that quickly so the eraf is if we build a 1.2 million dollar bridge um if that ends up being the cost of pinello then our ERAP, our 12.5% balance, because we've been paying a little bit, you know, each year we budget for ERAP, we will be left with 88,800. And I'm saying do half this year and half next year since. So know. do we have a ERAP 
surplus currently? Is mm -hmm. that what you're saying? Well, what because we because twelve and a half percent of one point two million would be more than eighty eight thousand. Right, exactly. That because remember okay. we budgeted for ERAF. Okay. We, well, because here I'll show you. But but I, I guess right we here. budgeted for the ERAF that we haven't paid, but exactly. that stays in the general fund, doesn't it? No, it goes into the fund eighty nine for FEMA. The, okay. For this so, specific, yeah. Okay. So right here, like last year or this current year, we budgeted fifty six seven ninety, and there was a little bit left over from the forty three one that paid off. P vine and then a little bit towards stuff, yeah, yeah exactly so we've been yeah. budgeting for ERAP each year okay and so then that makes sense I was looking at going that's not enough to cover that <laughs> well, <you're right. laughs> it was not and um, but the money we had plus this year's plus eighty eight thousand okay. to get us at so our we'd have to do forty four and then forty four yeah okay to so the Bruce, how are we go fish um, one fifteen right along yep we're anticipating a. What what makes it go to one thirty? Adding the we want you guys talked about adding the sidewalk money in there. It already had increased um in and then uh per the capital fund, and then you guys wanted me to add the sidewalk money in there. So in our last iteration, you were at we were at 120 because that would have been the progression of the capital fund, and then you wanted yeah. me to add the ten thousand of sidewalk. So I put that in here. Okay. I'm sorry, did you have a question? Yeah, uh, what line you're on? Uh, we are under public works, uh, right under, or right just above ERAF, the highlighted, the 130. Okay, because down below, you have sidewalk improvement in other public works, third line down, fourth line down. Right. And, it, and nothing but good. Exactly, because last meeting you guys asked me to add that ten thousand dollars to the highway rehabilitation fund. I had ten thousand in there, and you guys asked me to move it, so that's why it's no longer anything there. So the there only was... thing that I mm -hmm. see, I also reduced stormwater catch basins. Um... The only thing I see that you have to update yourself with is the spreadsheet. Still okay. shows one hundred and twenty, not one hundred and thirty. No. this one so you're you have 80 oh yeah, so of course. that's all all right now i gotta add a lot of fine walks all right so that's all right oh, okay yeah oh, remember we have yes have we have well sidewalks. we have yes. the um christian hill dollars. grant that we gotta get done next year for that first mile section we have the um, Sand Hill match money. Um, we have the, the sidewalk, Pleasant Street sidewalk match. And then we have the bridge on um, Watershed, right? Yep, and I updated all those that matching funds, that, those and, grants that we got. But I think I gave you that. Two of them will get done next year, Christian Hill and the bridge, right? Uh, hope, so yeah, I, well, um, I'll tell you. Hang on. Wait a second. Let me just tell you, because Christian in the bridge, the one there on Sand Hill, Sand Hill P Vine. So for the um, oh, watershed, not watershed. It's the one on P Vine that you come down Sand Hill and we usually close the road there. Uh, so Christian Hill paving grant has to be done by 2024. So um, either it'll happen next year or the year after we do. Depends kind of on the cycle, how I get a bit out, but just hopefully next, next year. year. That's my hope. And um, because if not, so, you're going to have too much going on the 20, the 2024, you know? Excuse me. Oh, yeah, but true. And then, so anyways, yeah. And I did updated the transportation and I also used that number to in your packet to update the capital fund budget for you. So you could see what the road, you mm -hmm. know, your capital fund looked like. And so I updated the amount so you could see what the grant was, the grant match plus added the ARPA. Right. Yep. So, um, yeah, the bridge is the one on when you come down Sand Hill, but go back, huh? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yep, it's the one that always floods. But I think we're going to end up writing a second grant to supplement that because it's going to be more than at least it appears that way now. So that may not happen then. Maybe. I don't know. I'm hoping it needs to happen in the spring, but they may supplement us. Sorry, Gene. Oh, a lot bigger. The sidewalk on uh, Pleasant. Yep. We did get that grant. Yep, yep, yep. It's on the um and is there a match on that? Yep, it's on the transportation spreadsheet that I put in your box in your um packet, the church street, church okay. pleasant street sidewalk. 
the grant amount is 424,000. Our local match is 106,000. And um, so that's in there. And I think I also included that in the capital fund that I updated the capital road spreadsheet. Okay. So, um, so as far as public works, was there any more questions on public works? I mean, yes, the budget's up 10 point. <laughs> well, it'll be down less than 10.51 now because I'll make that adjustment and reduce. Um, well, I mean, a, a fair amount of that is just increased cost and yeah. things, items. A some couple of, of pieces of it is really, you know, taking care of some of the gravel roads and things like that, that people have complained about. Yeah, and some of it, so. I mean, diesel and salt. I mean, I can't. I, I think you're going to see other towns that their budget's going to go up by more than we're, that. We're really going to have to stay on top of the gravel roads because as I've been traveling them, we've, we've got a lot of roads that are gra graded down to ledge. Yeah, I I want to, and, and that was one of the conversations we'll have here about this ARPA. I still believe that now that you've seen the capital, um, I included it in your packet with the capital roads you know, projection there that we have enough money to spend 300 and some odd thousand on gravel roads. I would like Morgan and AJ to pick a couple of sections that we know are bad, that are chronically bad and issues for us and have them rebuilt, under drain the whole thing and put that out to bid this winter and get it done next year with ARPA money because, or with just capital improvement fund money, because you're right, we need to do that and we need to do it from the base up under drain up just like we're going to do christian hill just like um you know and we know it we had a bad mud season last year we know there's spots we need to address and but without getting a project here because i've been on uh, been here a lot of years yeah in excess of 60 years and last year was one of the worst mud seasons but not where it's been bad before yeah it's true this is what people got to understand the fluke in front of my house was always this thing it was like summer all all, all spring. <laughs> that was funny. There was nothing wrong with that road the whole yeah. All spring. Yeah. But Morgan and AJ, I mean, they've driven the roads enough that they know that there are sections that need to be done. And and we need to do what you've been saying, which is from mm -hmm. rebuild it and rebuild them correctly. That deep. Yeah. And rebuild them correctly. So I agree. And I would like to spend ARPA money or capital money to do that. Uh, fire department, I... You had asked me about that. I think I adjusted the wages a little bit. Um, that was it. I don't believe I adjusted their budget any more than that. Yeah, the heat and some of those types of things. But yeah, constable, I didn't touch. Um, Chris and I are going to meet with the new or the, yeah, we could, we could the new chair. With this, I don't know if we if, how are we going to do it, but going from fifty-seven to seventy. And not having, I mean, I get asked all the time, where's our constable? Do we I get the constable? You know, I mean, we're getting, I think that it's if, just a condition. This is the way things are, you yeah. know, I understand. But, um, but seeing a big jump like that and it'll be have to be an item that you put out for the voters. I mean, I think that yeah. people want to have regular policing, in which case, if that's the case, you're either going to have to pay more money or go to the sheriff's department. Yeah. Chris and I meet with the what do you call him? Yeah, Ryan. The well, elect. Which yeah. Something. Sheriff elect. Sheriff elect. <laughs> um, uh, on Thursday. The Windsor County. Yeah, we're going to yeah. meet with him on um, Thursday. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I guess we, to piggyback on what sure. Paul was saying, I guess at this point, how I feel about the item anyways, budgetary wise, is, you know, if we are going to go above 57000 which it's not costing the taxpayers fifty seven thousand right now is costing you know twenty thousand yeah, twenty eight thousand so yeah. you know we've over budgeted for that item or underperformed services I guess I I think if we if we're gonna go above that if we are gonna seek in this case seventy then maybe maybe we maybe we vote in a level funded budget at fifty seven and say you know do we want to go to having Windsor County Patrol X amount of well, hours a week. Numbers we can talk about. Yeah, that. we could put a separate warning to say that'll be an extra right, right. twenty thousand dollars a year. Yeah. would you like that? And put it right on them to say they wanted it. Because the survey we did was really close. I mean, it was almost yeah, it half was. and half. But I didn't want to. I didn't want to really say too much because we're going to meet with Ryan, and I guess he's got some ideas about 
smaller community policing um, and having, I guess what he wants to do is in, in a way, and I don't, don't want to steal his thunder is um, have like one deputy that would be assigned to multiple towns in one area. So that deputy may be assigned to three towns and then those three towns kind of split the cost for, mm -hmm. or, you know, a weighted average of that time, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is, a you know, for small towns like yeah. us, I think that's a great idea. And that's kind of what we did with the constable for years. We split it three towns. And so I think he's kind of looking at that. And, and then I think maybe we'll get more of a, because I, we got numbers. He may, he I got may more say this is an $80,000 thing, or yeah. maybe it's a $50,000 thing. And I got my numbers from the current sheriff. Yeah. So that are in here. So, so, so people, people, you know, watching <laughs> will know that what we don't spend this year doesn't roll over no no into the next it year it goes into the general fund. it goes into yeah. the I've been asked that too. we didn't spend it this year it can right. roll it it will spend it goes the 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 undesignated fund it balance so yeah next. so it doesn't yeah. it doesn't it just sits in the right. undesignated fund balance but but we'll get a little more information on thursday and maybe we can make a better presentation to the board on yeah 14th 12th or whatever that next meeting so yeah so the recreation department just changed the wages a little bit. And um, so obviously that. This know, one's an easy one. Ellie just said we don't need. Yeah. So I have our 10. We're cutting wages at the pool. I got our 10 grand in there, but. Um, I will say that I'm still, I'm still concerned that as much talk as we've talked for the months we've talked it, no one has come back with. The pool has been looked at by engineer Joe, and it's going to cost $219,000. I don't, they're we're tossing stuff around. Well, it's, it's no, not their responsibility. And no, but they sure are willing to chop that out. I know. And like I said, <laughs> I talked to at I, any cost, I'm yeah, willing to chop it out. And I think I, and I actually know I said two weeks ago at our last meeting that Dietrich had spoken with Gunite. He came up with this crazy number. She emailed him back and said, you know, these are the dimensions. This is what we're looking for. You know, not that. And then, um, you know, she's, she's been out. So, but it is something that she's working on. She did have numbers from but this, this you know, group. Oh, that group. Yeah. This group threw the, the pool under the bus. Oh, sure. Yeah. Right yep. here tonight. I heard them yeah. specifically, if you're less than uh, 12 years old, we're yeah. not worried about you. You're right. Except, That's yeah. the pool. Yeah. And we're not worried about the pool. Right. And they're not because they're focused. They're obviously all their efforts for the last, you know, several years have been. And I, and I, I know, and I appreciate that. I know it's you the do. Bethel Rec Center. It's not the six man skate park. skate park center. I know. So hopefully, um, so yeah, I know. So, That's anyways, I left my, my personal beliefs. That's there you go. Well, I, I get what you're saying. And so we did include the money for skate park for servicing, but the only thing that changed in the budget for the rec was any salary numbers that may have changed. Um, Parks and public places. I didn't. Same thing. Didn't. Um, I don't think I changed much here. Oh, I did end up changing some because you want to use seasonal work, seasonal help. So I did change those numbers instead of making the parks person a full time position. Um, municipal office. I think the same thing I had changed was uh, wages. Um, I did have to change, I think, computer just because I wrote in my notes Nemric, how much Nemric was, how much Zoom is, how much Carbonite is. Contract labor? Is that for? <clears throat> we had thing? left the contract. The contract labor had asked for last year for maybe with all we weren't sure with all the money coming down the pike about grant writing, et cetera. I think we may end up spending some of this possibly with uh two rivers before the current fiscal year is out to get if they're offering some fees you know service for fees um we'll see and then i don't know what they're going to be doing i know i'm asking her to budget uh for rita to do some grant work and if the money so far the money that i'm asked the, the assistance that rita is providing mpm services and some other stuff is coming out of the grant we were awarded but if that was not the case and I had to pay her, uh, we would pay her, you know what I mean? Pay two rivers to do some of the work. So we kind of were using it for <clears throat> contract labor, grant writing, whatever we needed. Um, and then I left it in there at 10 because you guys had talked about, um, you know, we still don't know for sure, I guess, if there's going to be is two rivers. I've seen they have several ads out. Is somebody 
are we going to end up wanting to spend a few thousand dollars to join with another town for an energy coordinator or whatever? So we kind of wanted to cover ourselves by putting something in the budget. So I just left it same. Yeah, I, well, I'm not finding it, but it's um, under municipal offices. It's one, two, three, four. Yeah. Fifth one down, it just says labor. Oh, under just under labor. Okay. Yeah, and then on my notes, it says contract oh, labor. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so some um, of that was a little bit of a change, but. And um, I'm wondering if we could put that at 25. At 25,000? In hopes of. In hopes of our being able to participate if there is a multi-town project. Okay. Uh, not that our share would be that, I'm just- We don't really know. We have no way of knowing. I mean, I think at that point, we should get the voters away in and say, do we want to hire a, or do we want to be a part, you know, like anything that's going to increase it this year. And, you know, should we ask the voters if they want to be a part of paying for a regional climate coordinator or, you know, at $25,000 a year or, I, I don't know. I, I, I guess I agree that anything new like that, I think everybody should um, be able to weigh in rather than we make the decision on our own. I think Especially when you're talking that kind of money. Well, I think the hard part is going to be so we're going to pitch it to the voters that we'd like to set aside $25,000 for a position that we have not defined for an amount we have not defined. I mean, it's kind of a, could be a hard sell. <laughs> so I well, want I mean, to think $25,000 that I cannot tell you exactly what it's going to be. I think the 10, I think the 10,000, even though it may, you know, obviously it may not be the amount of, income that you need for that position for our participation in it, if it does come, I think at least it gives us a, a good starting placeholder. Yeah, because it will add to the conversation. <laughs> like for instance, right now, if somebody looks through it and they say at the town meeting, you know, what's the ten thousand dollars for? Yeah. We can say that we've we've put that money in there to include things like um, the potential participation in a, a climate regional climate coordinator or someone to bring in to do some grant writing it oh, gives us the flexibility to use that money now if all of a sudden two rivers or somebody says hey or or the regional towns hey we're gonna we're gonna do this thing and it's your your piece of it Bethel's 15 you know yeah. and at least we can go back and maybe if it's only five we just find it in the budget and do mm -hmm. it and then the next year we say oh 15 is for right there yeah. you know climate regional whatever yeah. But I think if you put 25 in there, you're going to get people asking kind of what Teresa was just saying is, what's 25 for, you know, and yeah. for something that isn't, yeah, hasn't happened yet. I, no, I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, so that's the, that's the hard part. Unless, unless we would, like David's saying, unless you want to go to the voters and say, you know, there's been discussion about a regional position that hasn't happened yet, but we would like to be um, proactive with this and we're thinking that it would be something like twenty five thousand dollars you know we put it on a warning yeah I, would I have you, no idea would you how like much to do that? Just, you know i don't know the only, pro the only difference is is the ten thousand that's placeholder is in the budget the, the 25 you go to the voters could become zero you know or or it could be 25 or you know or if it's, where does that money go and then doesn't happen it just stays it goes back to undesignated it's fund. unexpended fund yeah, yeah so it stays in the undesignated fund balance I mean, which is um be careful about how big that gets yes and we like i said I well just, this town has never grown too high it, it <laughs> no, doesn't but you know it, what it, i mean the last couple of years with you know Therese looking at the be, budget well it'll be interesting to see really better, because but. we have um i actually just got the audit draft tonight so I just, I started working on it before everybody got here. And uh, so it'll be, I haven't got to that far yet. But we have to be it'll careful be because. Because then we'll have to make a policy. And that's when you can start giving money right. back to taxpayers. Because we have to be careful because that money, even though at the end of the day, you can use technically it for whatever you want. I mean, yeah. the, 
the intent is to use that money for that item. Yeah. You know? Now things happen sometimes. You may have to borrow one to pay the other, mm-hmm. but to just arbitrarily put twenty five in there, knowing that maybe that position is not going to happen, I, I just and then have twenty five sure that option. Yes, yeah. and usually what? And I don't object to the yeah. to the town meeting mm-hmm. actually discussing whether or not we want to fund that kind of a position. Uh-huh. But, I mean, it'll be right now. It's on. If we leave it at ten in the budget, then it's it will not be a special discussion. It would just be a discussion as part of the full budget. Mm-hmm. But if you wanted to go to twenty five, then yes. No, but if somebody asks the question, Absolutely. then there is an opportunity to say that there have been conversations about yeah. an energy coordinator or climate or contract whatever we're gonna or, we or, put that yes. in here for these options that could yeah. be used to benefit the town yeah. either xyz and um so are you comfortable leaving it at 10 um or um, you, i or what would you we had 10 last year right or this year we have 10 in the budget we're in yeah should we have this back yeah and then just you know Ran, uh, well, it's probably more like twenty one thousand now, but like about every twenty one thousand dollars in the budget represents one penny on the tax rate. Right now, with the current grand list, right, mm-hmm. right. So, just you know, when you're thinking about things like that, you know. So, if we have ten thousand in the budget for this coming year, and we haven't spent ten thousand. Does that mean we have twenty, or does that mean ten thousand went into ten thousand? Then we'll only have ten thousand in this right. mm-hmm. Because what we'll do is we'll and we'll I'll have a better answer for you in a month or so once I get all the way through the audit and to tell you what the undesignated fund balance is. And then we'll have a better idea because most generally you divvy you'll take some of that money and put it into capital funds, and you also will most if you have a good sometimes people will return ten thousand dollars to the voter into the budget by in reducing the tax rate you put it in as revenue tax line. Rate. yeah saying okay we're going to add ten thousand dollars to the you know reduce people's taxes or reduce the budget by ten thousand dollars and and if you have a steady sir you know uh, undesignated fund balance and you can do that and <clears throat> we had no no undesignated fund balance for a while we, had a, we, had a, we owed everything yeah we owed uh, well and, that, and that's and, and that's so the, we're slowly you know, so I'll see what it is. And that's a good know. conversation that we are able to have now is yeah. it used to be, oh, we spent that, we didn't want to talk <laughs> you about know, that. before um, things came around. And, and if I remember right, the, not the auditor, but um, it yep. was recommended it that was we should have, I think, $300,000 yeah, of it was Fred who available balance to cover things like payroll and things like that yeah. and our town's always had to borrow that money yeah so they usually tell so you when we talk about undesignated you kind of have to make it up if we have a half a million dollars of undesignated money mm-hmm. you know 300 of that needs to stay in the checkbook so we can write yeah. checks the other 200 then we could figure out yeah. do we want to add some things or do we want to kick some money back at the yeah I, I can ask them what the new but they usually do recommend that you have, keep a percentage in your undesignated fund but then once we have one We'll actually write a policy about it because someone's like, "Oh, you don't have so, undesignated so, fund policy." I'm like, "Because we don't have an undesignated fund balance." <laughs> right. so, so then so, you do. You can. So, yeah, in, in response to the question, I, um, can we go for fifteen hundred or fifteen thousand instead of ten? I was gonna say you don't want. Not, to I don't want to add twenty five. I just want to add a little bit okay. because we know that there are conversations. It's the rest of the board then. That's up to you. I have my own feelings about the conversation and where we're going there, but yeah. if it happens, I'm not going to be the guy that says no. If the town wants to do it, fine. Um, I get. I could. I could vote yes. Lindley, what do you think? We currently have ten thousand in there. Do you, you know, Gina's request is 15. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm fine with it. I kind of see the same the same argument that's been being made, which is, you know, is it something that we put to the voters leaving the 10,000 in, but then kind of bring it to the voters, much like we've been advising different committees tonight to do, um, to say we have, we have a potential opportunity to 
participate, we'd need to have a budget in place in order to participate. Do the voters want to designate an additional X amount towards that? I think that would be the alternate. So I could I could be fine with putting fifteen thousand in to this budget. I could also see leaving it at ten and adding to the warning something about um, about the potential of this position and then leave it to the voters. I mean, I think in this case, Lindley, we just gotta like you would just have to put it in the budget because like the hard thing with going to the voters would be is we don't have we don't have the answers to the questions. You know what I mean? Like it'd be one thing if we had like a job description, yeah. uh, Cost. Uh, a pay scale. Know what's gonna happen. Uh, sure. This is going to be divided up amongst eight communities sure. that so much, but we, I, I somebody get, what, is going to I say, get what you're saying, but I also think that there's something to be said that, and this is sort of Jean's point is there are enough people invested and wanting to invest in climate action now that you actually don't need to have a job description. Some people will want that. They'll want that information, but you could say, look, this is something we don't have all the parameters of. But if we want to be in the running to be a town included in this, we'd have to have some budget set aside to participate, you know. And and so I think that the argument exists for, you know, we don't know everything, but it doesn't mean that would be a reason not to include it, not to put that out to the voters, owning that we don't have all the answers because no one has all the answers right now. Um, hmm. But so, I, yeah, I see your point, but I also don't think it should be the only argument against going to the voters. So why don't we just for tonight, why don't we leave it in there at 15? Yeah. And then why don't we all think about do we want to bring it to the next step? Would it be like Lindley, do we want to put it on the warning for or, you know? Or do or, we want to put a non-binding resolution before the voters about climate change and energy? Is that a priority? I don't disagree with you, but that's been done year after mm, year. Yeah. And I think you're you're trying to make the argument to us that this is more pressing than a non-binding vote and you're arguing against yourself now. So well, I'm just no, I'm, yeah. I'm 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 trying to, I'm thinking out loud. Okay. Well, John did a uh, non-binding resolution back in oh three years 18, ago. Maybe. Yeah, I think. He did. Remember that year? Eight yeah, nine, I think it I was. Think he did it. So he's which, got which I think Fago. it was favorable at that time. Um, John Fago. Yeah, but it was it was, you know, did it didn't have specifics to it. it and he was, didn't put it on the warning. He didn't get it to us in time, no. so we kind of did it at the no, end of the it was, meeting. It was other business. Yeah. I guess if I, my two cents is being non-binding is put the fifteen thousand in the regular budget because. We're also talking about the possibility of using this for other things, which is yeah. if two rivers had a fees for service, oh, if all yeah. just for energy coordinating, and I don't want, and I don't want to lose the money. You could use it for grant writing, and I could use something. it for something else. So if we put it out to the voters, and the voters sure. say no, then we've then lost the opportunity to maybe to do other things with the money. So. I, I'm saying let's put the 15 in the budget for now and see what it looks yeah. like. We'll just label it Lindley's slush fund, 15,000. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll that let you talk. goes over well. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's right. It's the slush fund. That's right. <laughs> All right, Paul, if you want it, it's yours. That's right. So I don't know if there were any other questions <laughs> on municipal office town hall, town officials, listers. I don't think I changed anything thing else um let's see social media i, I we might have beaten this already but I, I when we're know. talking about the appropriation oh no oh, appropriations the um town officials. the stipends for town officials yep. and on that mm -hmm. is we had and i know some of these we've talked about and agreed upon mm -hmm. um you know we we talked about the semi cemetery commissioner one mm -hmm. um and we talked about the health officer um one and i know we talked a little bit about the fire warden and it was like the fire warden plus two deputies yep said, remember and i gave you but guys it just seems like that 600 to 3000 is quite the jump well i here. remember we I know, asked uh, just because we asked gary kugler remember i got him you guys an email a couple of i don't know say the meeting in the last month or so and asked Gary, <clears throat> you know, how much time he'd spent, how many miles he'd done and, and got 
that number from him for the fire warden because he actually was saying, okay, 120 hours a year plus 500 miles. I can also say the tree warden we've never called. But that um, included people that included his two deputies, right? right? right. What he was saying was, package deal. yes, if he okay. didn't use the money himself, <laughs> he would pay the deputies. So because you'd asked him how much he'd used and, and we're trying to base these on real numbers. The tree warden has been the same and we have not called her for anything. So. And I'm sorry, I don't want to. So when we talk about the 3000, that is 3000, no matter what, or, or this is a $3,000 budget that has 120 hours a year in it. I, you asked me because you wanted to be more accurate. So since we were paying, we about based the health officer on $25 an hour. You guys said that's what we should use for the fire warden. So I talked to Gary, okay. asked him what he used, and then we estimated. Okay. So this is a. So that's per hour. That's yes. Right? I, I just, I forgot. So we. Per hour and a month. Doing yeah. So, so the three thousands of budget, not a state. It, it could be. That's the thing is, yeah. I guess you guys, could they've be always higher, been, be lower. they've yeah. always been paid as stipends. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's a determination you all need to make. Mm -hmm. um, okay. The health officer has said he doesn't want the money um, because he, this is his donation to the town. Mm -hmm. So we have a budget here, 1200, but if he leaves, we still need to keep something in the budget. Yep. Uh, trustees of public funds, $200 each. Um, mm -hmm. And then the select board. So <clears throat> I think that the difference between the tree warden and the fire warden are makes sense because the tree warden yeah, hasn't been asked anything and, and is mm -hmm. normally not. So listers, we've talked about that government operations. I think we talked about that. So um, I, again, the appropriations in italics are just estimates. If I've received an email with a real number, I've put that note in the budget and made those so they're no longer italics. Um, I did get an actual number from White River Valley Ambulance, uh, Steve Webster. So this is a this would be the number. It's a 0.21% increase. The prior years were 0.006 and 0.03. Um, last year, I had budgeted, um, you know, point, oh, I think, and then I had budgeted, oh, up 0.08 uh, for the past. But anyway, so this is the number he's working with. The 159, 168, we're going to receive an email saying that's what it is. They like were 21% increase. That's a big jump. Mm -hmm. Who is who? Um, Steve Webster. No, who is our representative? David Aldrigetti. And so he, but he just barely took over. Um, I mean, that's going to spar discussions again on, do we mm -hmm. even want to be a part of them? Yep. And you know what, what'll happen is Dave will have to, will be there to talk about it. Um, I also will give you guys uh, Steve's mm. email because um, they are looking at some big increases. They were also lucky. This is a lesser increase than they had originally thought because some money that they had received from a federal agency, they ended up giving it to them as a grant and not making them pay it back as a loan. So I think that they're looking at several things, not only costs for uh, equipment, and I don't know if they have to, you know, they obviously they have paid staff, um, but I haven't it's seen just an awful jump minutes. One year. It is. So I'll have to, um, I will print out Steve's email and give that to you guys. Because I know, time. I know when we broke a hundred thousand in this town, it, was, it became a very hot discussion on do we even want to be a part of White River Valley Ambulance and then what two years later Randolph was having the same discussions because yeah. we even talked about what our options were at that point we but you mean ourselves which was if I remember right doing it ourselves was going to be like a quarter million dollars or something I was just going to say you guys know how much it would cost there was you talks about ambulance. partnering with Royalton wasn't it at some point or something yeah I know it got pretty heated, so yeah. just prepare for that. And well, we'll talk. I it's can an guess, awful jump for one year. I can so. get Steve's email and then talk uh, to Dave Aldrigetti because he's attended some meetings. So at this point, he'll have. Well, what happened years ago, Therese, is once this discussion happened, the numbers that they were proposing to us all of a sudden went down. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. And, and then they stayed, I want to say level funded, but pretty 
pretty decent for the last couple of years. And now all of a sudden they're looking for a big increase again. And well, my guess is- I just wonder if there's any pushback on this. I don't know. I mean, I'll have to email Steve. He had a computer crash. So Bring him in next one. No, here. so, so, so Steve- Didn't you used to get their financials so we could see- You do. You will. In the because, yeah, but yeah. That, but that's- I get them every month. Yeah. Talking about this. Oh, you get them every month? Yeah. yeah. So um, I'd like I, to know what the 29,000 or 20, $32,000 increases. I'll give you um, an idea. It's insurance and yeah. stuff like that. Retirement. And I'll salad. give you their current Some fuel financials. Because I, calories and he well, said, they want to replace that green ambulance ambulance too. Oh, I want his car. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was just saying. They would tell me. He's, he, <laughs> you might give me enough of the select board member to get a new car. We send <laughs> he sends we send he sends me the financials every month. So all right. Um, Thanks for all the good news, Trees. I don't forward them on to you, you, but one one last part for so Yeah. You look at the last line on the last page. Okay. So we're looking at last year's budgeted at two five seven one four two six. And this year we're going to be at two eight five zero three five six. Hang on, I have to flip to the last page. Hang on. Uh, two eight. Well, the two eight that was the I'm at two seven nine eight. The two eight five zero was if I added in the difference for the constable. So if you just say at the two seven nine eight, yeah, it's an eight point eight two percent increase over last year. However, remember because we have growth in the grand list. I'm only currently uh, projecting. Um, you know, almost 52. Two. Remember that, like I just said, that was from the constable budget. Remember how I had two different columns? One is the column for oh, the, for the, yeah. uh, the column with the words in it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. so, you know, it's hard to figure that how to put it. Right, but still, so, it, so it's. Two million five seventy one versus two million seven eight nine uh, ninety eight. Yeah, so it's still at eight point. So some things that offset that is we have. Remember that's only for five years. Is we have the fifty four thousand dollars a year from transfer station sale. Right. Um, that buys it down, and the grand list went up by over a hundred thousand. Right. Um, so the grand list was just over. Just over two million, and now is that two one something? So that growth kind of offsets mm -hmm. um, a large portion of that. So I think right now the way this stands, Teresa and I were fighting over the final number through phone discussion today. But the way it is right now, uh, right here, the way it was before any changes tonight was like a one one cent. Yeah, so, so this last year we were at 1.0624 and we're looking at 1.0692. So if we use the current grand list, which I think is going to change to go up, we're only looking at an increase over last year of less than 1%. So while the budget looks obviously has yeah. gone up 8% because there's growth in the grand list, we're, um, you know, Saved our, saved like, our okay, what else do we want to put money on? Well, we also need to take a little bit of way. Yeah, we, we talked about this. Yes, we did talk I about it. can't be doing this because we're going oh. all of a sudden we got to come up with exactly yeah. we, one thing. Have, and I, I didn't don't get a forget chance the 50,000 that you have that's going to go away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So you're really sitting at short. So that 50,000 is a little over two cents. So really, you're at a three cent growth oh, on this. Appreciate. That's which is about which is kind of the promise that we had made to right. however or do we want to keep the three cent and put some two cents away for another day i guess it could be a conversation the only thing i see in there that you know we just have to be careful is we have so many grants that we have received which is mm -hmm. awesome but we just have to make sure that we have all the matching money mm -hmm. and get that moving forward so yeah. if we ever want to put another 20 or 30 or 40 grand into that capital fund so that we have that I will tell you to start thinking because I'm already thinking if we are going to spend more money, mm -hmm. it's coming on infrastructure. Absolutely. Well, that's Absolutely. yeah, that's that's mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And no infrastructure, we're going to need to spend on infrastructure. He's right. I mean, it's roads. We know we're going into the second phase of the water project, so we have a handle on water sewer. Sewer 
Richard's coming across some stuff that we need to address. We did the pumps, we did the generator, but yeah. we're, I mean, that plant's 30 years old. So we have bringing in some people to look at things and um, we know there's some things we're going to have to do. We also know with our recent sanitary survey that there's things that we need to do because of the EPA regulation yeah. changes. But the next big spending is going to be the town garage, which I can't believe is going to be less than 1.2 million. Remember the um Jonathan, I'm just thinking is there anything that's gonna pop up when we do the next phase of the water up Sand Hill that oh, I'm sure could be taken care of when we're digging a hole? <laughs> well we're gonna are, find Jimmy Hoffa in there somewhere. <laughs> we are doing all the under drain, all the storm water, um replacing a hydrant. So we're doing everything that needs to be done there. We're not doing sewer, but it doesn't need it. And we're also doing the water on Bicentennial, which needs it. So, you know, we're dealing with okay. everything on that. Well, well, remember this what, about the, what about the, the uh, fire hydrants that are still bagged? They will be bagged until we complete phase two because of Crystal Drive. Okay. Um, I'm just thinking about people who have fire insurance Mm -hmm. They have a hydrant right here. Well, they haven't had that. So if the fire, if they have a fire uh, and an inspector comes, wait a minute, you lied to us. Yeah. We're not going to cover your house. Well, hopefully birth. they're they're near a dry hydrant, but um we we just can't, frankly. I mean, it, there's there's water there. It's just not properly pressured. Exactly. And what happened is state requirements. whoever added crystal dry had no business adding crystal drive. They obviously didn't do a pressure test. Yeah, they don't have the minimum They pressure. don't have the pressure. A, an engineer should would have told them no. So that's where we're at. a proper pump station. Yeah, so that's why we'll be going to that bond boat and that'll take care of that. Plus we have the 5,500 a year that comes from the fire department to water department to replace hydrants. And if we remove the fuel tank under the attached, we'll lose the term garage loosely at the town office, we're also going to move that hydrant. So, and Tim also had a schedule of hydrant replacement. Well, that's what I'm thinking. Because mm -hmm. I know he had that. He did. Yeah. But it, but uh, we're coming in another yeah. another season. Yeah. And we actually replacements. made headway. We were ahead of our schedule because we had so many okay. hydrants replaced during phase one. But yes, phase two, once we get the pump station online, that will we were replacing deal like with two those. Years. Two years. Yeah, yeah. we did. Yeah six or eight during the project so that will we go in right here in town it's not i know and we we've, we've done their water work to that right? yeah and i don't remember what the story I is why that's not up and running i don't know that would be a question i have to ask richard because we did all those so i don't know where is it it's right here by the credit union oh okay that one there's that's a story there but i don't remember what it is hydrant and we also got to think in this budget too you know there's a lot of uh American Rescue Plan money that we use for some of these, we'll call them one-time purchases, but probably would have impacted the budget somehow because we had to buy them anyways, right? Definitely. So even though it may only go up one cent, our budget's probably gone up by yeah. a half a dozen cents. It's just we've been able to use some one-time money to kind of buy that down. Right. Definitely bought down utilities because that would have been a big hit for sewer, the sewer budget for sure to replace the pumps and that's actually process is underway uh we heard from phil laramie and i think he's actually going to be starting and maybe this week or next so that's underway well we have found the, the, mm -hmm. and we have found some other things that need to be repaired just because some of those things are at the end of their useful life but the tim been there since the beginning. and tim did have a um in the town and Tim, you guys paid for a capital, you know, plan for sewer. So Richard has that and he's been going through it and making notes beside it as he gets things looked at and inspected and getting prices so we can update the capital plan for that. We know that one of the, um, we've had somebody come and look at some stuff at the digester and at the other, um, you know, tanks. So we have, we're having some work done um so we'll just be addressing those issues but you're right arpa money really saved the bacon for the sewer rate okay, sure. the pumps are a little more efficient yeah. yes yeah. yep yep so yeah. absolutely yeah so so the bottom line at this point is that we well we have increased we anticipate increased expenses we do not anticipate that there will be any significant increase in property taxes not at this iteration of the budget, right. no. 
And However, there will be some <clears throat> addendums to the warning that could increase things if people vote those in like right? the library and possibly additional funding for the skate park that would be you know there but could then be, they'd be voting on that would be directly, you know so yep um, but, so so they may want they may say in those conversations well i'm willing to add another pen absolutely you know yeah yep. i mean if this was a regular year we did not sell the transfer station we'd be looking at a three penny increase which is kind of since I've been on the board and Paul was right behind me, that was kind of the what you've been promise to to, right. to get us. And you've done, yeah. And yeah. It's been, and it's and granted, you know, job. inflation tripled that, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, we're still managing it pretty mm -hmm. well. Um, Paul, so, when does the appropriation committee meet? Uh, we haven't set a date yet. The, the applications are due on the 1st of December, and then we usually meet the following week. And I've already spoken to the members, so we just have to. Pick a day. Oh, sweet. Yeah, to get together. Are you seeing any application in bad? Oh yeah. No, we, yeah. Yeah, we are. We're finding though that they're not following what we're asking them. They're not asking us, they're not telling us how much they want. Some of them are giving us the information about how many Bethel residents they yeah, actually get service. Stuff, yeah. Yeah. Um, you saying you're getting nothing if you don't well, do as we ask. You know, but Kelly's been following up with follow-up emails and phone calls and stuff to try gotta, to... You got to give them tough love. I'm sorry. You can't well, do what we ask. You yeah. can't get any of our money. Yep, I think and they have been. They're usually pretty... Yeah, I think a lot of things with those organizations is they're so used to sending out the rubber-stamped version, right? right? They send every community probably the same letter, yep. you know? Uh, look, You know, where we're looking for a little more detail on ours. Put up my wallet. I know where it's going. Yep. So... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you and everybody. So that's good. Did you have something, Jean? Mm -hmm. Um. So I mean, I, I think you know, I, I think I don't want to say we got lucky, but I think you know, with I've talked to other people at other towns that are working on their budgets right now, and they're all a little scared, mm -hmm. you know, or talking about potentially having to limit some services to keep things in order. So. Well, they don't have too much trouble with the uh, select board meetings in Chelsea anymore. Yeah. <laughs> That's Unless right. you're the one person <laughs> to, to decide, right? That's right. Right. Yeah. Go nothing, for it. Nothing's it's... legal, but. Yeah. yeah. God bless them. But, um, so, nice I mean, I think, I, I think, you know, there's a lot to say that we're, we're able to at least offer the same services that we have offered, mm -hmm. you know, going forward. And we've done it in a pretty reasonable way. Budget increase, uh, and, and it's hard material too. insurance uh, increases that we're seeing. Well, I mean, I, again, thank you know the the grand list went up. Um, which thank God for us. That's what saved our bacon. Uh, we got you know some one time money grand list in that with the transfer station sale and some and some ARPA money <laughs> when the bubble breaks. <laughs> yeah. Well, the good thing is we're also rolling into a reappraisal, so the grand list is going to go up, I think, considerably. No re re reappraisal. Reappraisal. And you know, also too, you know, people get, oh, yeah, don't hit the yeah. panic button because it will also help some people who are, you know, overvalued. Some people overvalued, some people undervalued, and you know, things like that. I know people mm -hmm. get nervous, um, but um, <clears throat> I, you know, so it's I actually we'd had a reappraisal <clears throat> in, in Brookfield, and I actually went and met them. I got my reappraisal. Obviously, had gone up, and but I went and I met with. The listers and the person who did the reappraisal and and it was a fair assessment and we i asked him about it at when the land schedule was generated and this and that and you know what it was it was a it was a, i felt that it was a reasonable assessment i wasn't there i just wanted information and um it's i wasn't a new there benchmark to, you know? yeah i wasn't there to grieve i just wanted to know and i was ha I'm actually very happy to hear like when the the land schedule was set and this and that and when they'd had one and and um but yeah so it'll be interesting to see how our sugar's out so um we talked about last time i think we just didn't have i think the that, right numbers or well we did so have the right numbers i just wasn't smart enough to realize that the math was right so the 162 135 plus the sewer money you know if you did the math i i it was right the I 162 just, 135 is stuff that is going to the sewer a uh, motion to transfer 162, 135 of the general fund surplus that's caused by the ARPA money. And we're going to transfer, um, we're transferring 162, 135 to the capital sewer fund. 
$20,000 to the Highway Capital Equipment Fund and the balance of 396069.68 to Capital Roads. So the math was right. If I, I just, I don't know, too tired out of it to realize. So this is the motion. So this, what it does do is it leaves $5,000 for the website upgrade in the general fund. So that means we need to make that website update happen before June. And if it doesn't, then I'll come to you and ask you to transfer $5,000 so into else. capital improvements or something so that we can access the money. Mm -hmm. um, but So the math works. Um, and then with that, I also had given you in your packet a updated roads plan. And that showed all of the grants that we were awarded. There still is a grant out there that we've applied for that we haven't been awarded, which is like the million bucks to do the one culvert on Camp Brook Road and our 10% match. But I don't know if we're going to get that. Um, and if you look at the numbers, it really, I would encourage you to spend 300,000 or more to 325 on gravel roads let us put together rfps like we did um, after the april 2019 flood except they are going to be under drain the whole thing like a total rebuild let's put it out to bid this winter and do some of that in the spring now we don't have to spend all three hundred thousand this year but let's pick let's allow aj and morgan to make some recommendations on places in that a mile here and mile there yes Exactly. Where they dump twenty thousand dollars into that mud hole every year. Exactly. Let's do something about that. Absolutely. And so maybe this year you say, look, you know what? We're gonna let you spend a hundred or hundred and twenty-five because obviously we have other paved roads. We have Camp Brook, you know, the six miles of Camp Brook that's Are there going to the sub base on Christian Hill or we just Yes, okay. whole enchilada there. And um so that's what we need to do. And that's how, you know, so that's obviously our plan moving forward is our days of just skim coding stuff have got to end. We've spent so much money on that over the last 10 years. And so anyway, so that's my recommendation is, is do make this motion and then let me talk to AJ and Morgan and let's let them pick a couple of miles and get it out to bid over the winter and, you All know. Right. So moved. Get it done. You have a second? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All in favor? I'm going away because Chris never He wants to go home. He's tired. I had to cook dinner for the girls, though. He's had a busy day. Uh, town manager's report. Um, else? Yes, I just have one thing. Um, I already talked to Dave Eddy about it. Um, Mr. Gothier on Sugar Hill Road. Do you want to, do you have time Thursday at 1, Chris? Ugh. Thursday? Mm -hmm. at 1 p.m. I can send you the same email I'm going to send Dave tomorrow and you can check because to quote him he said what about Pat Jarvis <laughs> he said does he work for Pike he goes well he must know something about roads. we just yeah, have a maybe, little maybe after we get done talking we're talking to um Ryan that day right in the morning Palmer. at 9 a.m. yeah oh it has to be at one uh -huh. oh well, that's the time I've set with him but here's oh. what I'm talking about you can take I'll send you an email tomorrow yeah, I might be able to make that work so right, I'll email you that's it for, um, we're still uh, running a bit short staff, but so if you call and Pam and I don't answer, um, please leave a message. It's not that we don't want to talk to you. It's that we may be talking to somebody else. So other than that, I'm good. Okay, select board meeting minutes from the 14th. Any amendments could, uh, to it? I just didn't like that. If, if you want, I could be there too. Okay, perfect. Yay, so I'm going Dave is the yes. Yeah, it sounds like he's more the merrier. <laughs> um, uh, Mr. Gothier, I sent him a certified letter about some issue with Sugar Hill, and he called Dave, Eddie, and then Dave called me, and then <laughs> I sent the message in the meantime to Mr. Gothier. He called me back. And Small tag, so he just has a he has some concerns about it. So there's some stuff in that right away. Okay. 
So any issues with the December, the November 14th minutes? Nope. Nope. Move to accept as printed. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Do we need to sign something on the amendment on our cemetery rules? Nope. I think we just, no, I think it's just we I write on just the base it. that it's amended. Just note it down the line. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Oh, and then, um, so for the winter, I know it wasn't a big deal when we did it. Um, I don't know. We did it some time Not ago. Not last year. What, the year before? It wasn't last year. Yeah, I can't remember where it was. We, we moved the board meetings to 6.30 for a period of time. It was in one month there. I don't know. Maybe it was early this year, late last year or something. Well, you didn't coach last year, so no. it was the year before. I think we moved it to go, was it December to April? I don't know. I can't. Do you remember, remember Lindley? Maybe, I, don't, I can't I remember, remember what it was. doing it, but not when. Yeah. Do you yeah. remember what's this? I in a long time. I thought it was like maybe three meetings. We did. I don't know. When does the mm. game schedule end? Well, it's not the game. It's a practice. I had practice from four thirty to six. So, I mean, I guess my my availability is I can get right over here after practice, which is like ten after six, and we can start meeting at ten after six, or or formally maybe ask to see if we could do it at 6 30. Well I mean 6 30 is going to give you some breathing room to get the girls home and whatever. So, so it don't matter I mean 6 30. If you guys okay with me being late, I'm fine with doing that. Or if, I know when we did 6 30 last time for a period of time, it was like for a month. Mm -hmm. yeah. Somebody had made the record said that they thought that the half an hour later was better anyways, but I don't remember what we even did that for now. Did that in January. January? I can't remember what we did it for though. It was basketball. It was something about it was it was basketball. Yeah, it was something basketball that year. Yeah, yeah, I don't think okay. I don't think it was last winter. Yeah. Well, her calendar. I know. Yeah. I don't remember. So, was it just one date? Yeah, I don't. Know. Yeah. That's fine either way. So, do you want to do um? So how? I mean, like, for, for rest if, of December and all the January. Six thirty. It'd be December, January, and probably early February, I guess. Okay. If so if everybody's good with that. If everybody's decent with that. Yeah, it's fine. Well, to make it consistent, I'll just do December through February. That way I don't have one meeting in February at one time and one at the other because I might goof people yeah, up. And cool. Pam will whip you because she's got to fix the sign out front. And if you make her put them at two different times, she'll hurt you. So I'm okay with it. Extra half hour, I get to stay in bed. It's good. I'm all right. Extra comp time. Yeah, I'm actually calling time. It serves me so well. <laughs> huh? He's going to need a vote with different consensus. As long as they are good. As long as they're good. You, you, you okay, okay with that, Lindley? All right. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Anything else come before the board? I can't think before of we all run out. All right. Just need a motion to adjourn. I'll move. Second. Okay. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you.